editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, What's Buzzing on Social Media. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. All about those products we've seen on social media and wondered whether to add to cart. Well, we rounded out our favorite trending items from lip gloss, yes, it's making a comeback, to flared leggings, also popular again. And remember, see that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Watermelon has been a mega trend when it comes to beauty products, and we have seen all things watermelon taking social media by storm. Now, watermelon sleeping masks are at the top of the social media heap, and few sleeping masks have received as much hype as the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. It's a TikTok star in its own right with over 2.2 million views and fans say it's worth the hype. But I gotta tell you, this sleeping mask had me at the word sleeping. I mean, who doesn't love a product that goes to work when you hit the hay? And the brand says that this product not only is designed to help make your skin feel smoother, but it helps to refine pores. And they also say that it helps to brighten your skin and also exfoliate. Plus, it's got an impressive list of ingredients that includes real watermelon extract and even hyaluronic acid and AHAs, which is really glycolic acid. And I've got to tell you the scent. It smells so good. It's like fresh watermelons. And this product isn't just a social media star. It's a star in real life. Yep, it's got 73,000 likes on Sephora.com. Okay, now get ready for another TikTok star that beauty lovers are obsessed with. The Dior Addict Lip Glow Oil, and this cult and celeb fave has a hashtag with over 73 million views and climbing. And lip gloss is making a huge comeback. And this ultra shiny gloss has been selling out everywhere. And here's what gets everybody so excited about it. It's a multitasker. It's like a lip gloss and a lip care product all in one. And the brand says that the lip oil is infused with cherry oil. So it nourishes and protects and softens the lips while adding a natural color finish. In fact, the brand also says that the lip oil is formulated to adapt to all lip colors to bring out one's own unique and rosy glow. And one of the reasons why lip gloss is having such a big comeback, in my opinion, is we are seeing so much gloss. I mean, on the face, that's been a really big trend, that sort of shiny trend. So it makes sense that it would also transfer to the lips. So now let's talk hair love. There's a lot of love out there for this next product, as well as for its founder. These are the Nourishing Shine Drops from JVN, which is brought to you by hair guru and TV personality, Jonathan Van Ness. And the brand is so popular that the hashtag for this brand alone boasts over 10.8 million views. And I just love Jonathan's positivity and his enthusiasm and the brand's inclusive vibe. And I also love what the brand has to say about the product, that it makes your hair look like it's lit from within. I mean, shoppers really do rave about how these drops really bring about a rich glow and shine. And if you have a minute, you've got to check out the how-to videos on the site. Jonathan shows you exactly how to use this product, and it's so easy. I mean, you just take a few drops, and then you put them into your hands, you rub them together, and he says to take your hands and just rub it down from sort of the mid shaft down to the ends and work it through. And Jonathan also says that this can be used on all hair types. And the brand says that the product also helps to smooth, frizz bust, and hydrate. Now, next up, we have another trending and affordable accessory that, in my humble opinion, has the capability to transform any outfit in an instant. Yes, the pattern tight is having quite a moment, and we're seeing some major traction from not only social media, 
but also from high-end designers. And what I love the most about this trend is that you can get in on this designer runway look without the designer price tag. I've actually seen pattern tights from high-end designers starting at $200 up to even $2,500. So forgive me if I get really excited, but we've got such affordable options here. So here we have a selection of really great looking pattern tights. Everything from herringbone to a beautiful lace to a heart motif. And we're seeing lots of heart motifs out there. That's a big trend even on its own. And my favorite way to wear them is to pair them with, say, last year's little black dress, right? And suddenly the look is transformed, it's updated. I love wearing these with trousers, especially crop trousers. So you can kind of see the pattern tight peeking out. And you know another really cool way to wear them? You can actually wear them with jeans and distressed jeans. Oh my gosh, they look so cool. You could see the pattern tight through some of the holes. It really is a little fashion trick that I love. Next, we've got a favorite from the aughts that are making a major comeback. I may have called them yoga pants, but Gen Z has dubbed them the flared legging. But one thing's for sure, whatever you call them, they are massive social media stars. So let me introduce you to the airy, real me, high-waisted crossover flare legging, and this style is a double winner. So not only does it have that great flare silhouette, Check it out, it has that crossover waistband that has become so incredibly popular. So the brand says that these leggings are made out of their real knee fabric, and they say it has light support, and this fabric feels really buttery. So it's a really versatile legging. You can wear it hanging out, you can wear it to the gym, you can definitely wear it while you're doing yoga. So I totally get why these are so popular. So now for a sneak peek at spring, let's talk about an incredibly popular shoe that encompasses four big viral trends in one. This it shoe has been on the scene for a while now and thanks to its popularity both on social media and on celebs, we don't see it going anywhere. So let me tell you about what those four trends are. First of all, we've got that mule style, the mule silhouette, which is just really slip in and easy to wear. Also, check out these braided straps, the double strap. They're also kind of padded, so that's another massive trend that we're seeing. Also, the block heel. It's a lot easier to wear than the stiletto, especially if we're transitioning from sneakers. And another big trend that we're seeing everywhere is this squared toe sole here. And I really like all of these sophisticated neutrals, and these are essentially a designer dupe. And lastly, I really think that they look expensive. So this is a great viral trend to try out coming up this spring. And this next must have is one of the coolest fashion gadgets I've run across in a long time. It's the Nori Press and it has changed the game in both design and innovation. And it is no wonder that it has over 1.4 million views on TikTok. And it's a wrinkle removing tool. And it's like a cross between an iron and a steamer. And Boy, do I wish I had one of these when I first started out in my fashion career as an assistant to a celebrity stylist. I can tell you guys that I spent about 90% of my time steaming. So I got well acquainted with the conventional steamers and I gotta tell you, pretty much all of them leak. So I was thrilled to try out the Nori and I think the design is just so cool. I mean, look at that. It almost looks like a straightening iron and it works like one too. And one of the things I like so much about when I use this is it's just really easy and it also irons both sides of the fabric at once. So you just clamp it onto the fabric and just pull it down. And oh my gosh, it really is a game changer in the world of ironing and steaming. You don't even need an ironing board. So I love that ease. Plus it's 1.4 pounds, so it's great for travel. You can throw it in your bag and go. So let's go through these products one more time. And you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the Glow Recipe Sleeping Mask, the Dior Lip Oil, 
the JVN Nourishing Shine Drops, the Pattern Tights, the Offline by Airy Flare Leggings, the Women's Braided Heeled Sandals, and the Nori Press Steam Iron. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's it for Style Finder. Up next, designer and lifestyle influencer Vanita Aspen is chatting with Mako and Lovu about some of her favorite must-have products. Welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. Now, you may know her from Southern Charm, designer and lifestyle influencer, Vanita Aspen is here with us to talk all things Southern style and more. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Vanita, it's such a pleasure to have you here. How are you today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing great. Listen, I remember the first time I saw you on social media, I was like, wait a minute, who is this gorgeous girl? So I had to hit that follow button. What do you think, you have a huge social media following, what do you think gets people to sort of gravitate towards you? I think people gravitate towards me because I choose not to stick within an aesthetic and like I'm different every day. I show the ins and outs of daily life and the fact that everything's just not perfect. I love that and I love the, um, the photos that you have of you and your mom, so cute. And then you also show a style as well. What's the key to looking pulled together? The key to looking put together is always jewelry. You have to wear like some form of earring or bracelet that helps pull the entire look together. So if you're not feeling too strong about it, an accessory will definitely help. I agree with that. Accessories are like the cherry on top. Now, Southern right. Charm fans would just not have it if I didn't ask you. Are you gonna see more of you on the show? 
I don't know. You're going to have to watch it. Oh, okay. A nice <laughs> little tease there. I'm here for it. Okay. Speaking of things to watch, I love these items that you brought for today's show. Can we start with these portable chargers? A great deal yeah. for two of them. You yeah. get two. I chose the black and white ones. They charge super quick and they're really lightweight, so they don't like weigh the bag down. I feel like a lot of portable chargers are too heavy and this is like a great weight. Absolutely, and I think they're great for every household. If you think how many people in your house have devices, so it's nice to always have chargers. All right, let's move on from chargers to something that charges my life, which is makeup. This blush that you brought here, okay? First of all, you look gorgeous. I have it I on. To say that. Right, you have it on? Okay, but why have cream on. over powder? <laughs> Cream over powder because cream looks more natural. And I love this blush because two reasons. You get a lot of product and it's super affordable at $6. Oh. And the pigmentation is unmatched. I mean, I'm swatching it right here and I have to agree with you about the pigmentation. It's unmatched. And I like this for all ages too. It looks great on everybody, even if you have mature skin. It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things I am guilty of, Vanita, is not cleaning my devices, even my sunglasses. I love this next pick, tell me about it. Okay, so the next pick is just so good, and I love the fact that it comes with microfiber tiles, so you make sure that there's no lint or anything like that on your screen or on your sunglasses when you're done wiping your products down. Oh, I love that. Look at how it just cleaned my sunglasses. I'm so guilty of having foggy glasses, so this is a <laughs> lifesaver. Okay, speaking of lifesavers, let's talk about being in the kitchen. A lot of people don't really like prep work when it comes to cooking. This vegetable chopper, I'm obsessed. Also, like to give you a little background, I went to culinary school. Oh. So like, look at that. I love all the little fun inventions for the kitchen. And I feel like this vegetable chopper is a lifesaver for everyone because one, no one likes to chop onions. No one likes to chop potatoes and it just makes it so simple. It has like, this little square here and it comes with different size like blades and you can see right here and it's just perfect and it's easy to clean oh i love that onions make me cry is that crazy but it's true to this day they still make me cry so i love that yes and then a little tip for you is to either run your onion under hot water or put it in the freezer right before you cut it so I shouldn't say the fumes, but like the aroma that right. they come out quickly. <laughs> I know what you mean, I know what you mean. And last but not least, you talk about jewelry being the key to looking pulled together. You have this jewelry organizer, which I think is fantastic. Yes, it comes in three different shapes. Um, so I also, I have one for both bracelets, necklaces, and earrings. And it's just so easy and things don't get tangled up and you just don't have to think about it when you're gonna get dressed and put your accessories on. I find that it saves me money too because I'll go out to the store, I'll shop online and be like, wait, I already have that because I can see it in my jewelry organizer. Well, Vanita, thank you so much for joining us. What else are you up to? What else are you working on next? Right now, I am working on an adaptive wear brand. So that's a project that nice. is keeping me busy. Oh, that's awesome. Listen, we look forward to following you and good luck with all your ventures. We'll see you really soon. Thank you so much. All right, bye. All right, now let's run through the products one more time. The portable charger, the e.l.f. Cosmetics Cream Blush, the Woosh Screen Cleaner Kit, the Full Star Vegetable Chopper, the Strata Life Jewelry Organizer. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Adriana Brock has more popular products in editor's picks, like a cordless vacuum that weighs just three pounds, just in time for spring cleaning. Don't go away.
everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, and we have been sharing those products we can't get enough of that we've discovered on social media. I have some more favorites from Old Navy's new three-in-one jeans, more on that in a bit, to the Va Broom, just in time for spring cleaning. See that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started. Finding the perfect pair of jeans doesn't have to be hard and Old Navy is making it easier than ever with the new Fits You denim collection. Each pair is designed to fit three different sizes to adjust to your perfect shape. This one features the best-selling Rockstar Skinny Cut, which has a flattering high-rise fit and a wallet-friendly price. And moving on to some beauty finds, Milk Beauty is one of those popular beauty brands taking over social media, and their new launch is no exception. The brand's brand new Rise Mascara is a vegan mascara that, according to the brand, is formulated to lift, lengthen, and curl lashes with weightless volume. And according to the brand, all you need is a few coats and you don't have to worry about clumping or smudging for up to 12 hours. And when it comes to accessorizing, a cute headband is the perfect way to add a little pop to any outfit. And it helps amp up a good hair day. The knotted headband trend isn't going anywhere, but pearls are actually the latest accessory that's taking over the fashion world. So with this one, you get two trends with this chic find. And you get a set of four for about $15. And if you're like me, you're probably gonna wear these all the time. And staying on the topic of hair, Heatless curlers are having an unexpected social media hit this season. These come with a set of 28 heatless waivers and all you need is about 20 for a full head of hair. And according to the brand, to use it, all you have to do is grab small sections of damp hair and weave it into the curler using the tool. And in about an hour, you're gonna get a full head of waves and curls and you've gotta see the results to believe them. And you don't have to be on hashtag clean talk to appreciate this next find. It's a two-in-one cleaning tool that's simply genius. It's a lightweight cordless broom with a built-in mini vacuum that will have you ditching that dustpan for good. The Va Broom does all the work for you. So once you're done sweeping, you just tilt the broom on its side and it sucks up all the dirt and debris in one go. Voila. Household chores have never been so much easier. And speaking of chores, if you're like me and your handbag is probably a catch-all for everything and it can get dirty so fast, this clean ball is really cool because it's designed to pick up dirt and crumbs, everything that's floating around in that bag. All you have to do is pop it in your purse. You can even use it in the kid's backpack and it does all the work for you. And the brand says, what's really great about this too is you can reuse it. You just pop it open, you wash it, and you can use it over and over again. And we all wanna get organized and labels make the job so much easier. So whether you're tackling your file cabinet or a spice rack, this little wireless label maker is absolutely incredible. It creates labels using an app that lets you customize everything from size, font, and even symbols. And you know we love a QR code and this one can actually make one. Last but certainly not least is this pizza maker that's taking TikTok by storm. It is one of those things you wish you had discovered sooner. It's a rotating pizza oven and it makes delicious crispy pies in about 25 minutes. But it can also be used to cook other snacks like chicken wings and quesadillas, grilled sandwiches, and even a cookie pie. It comes with a self timer and a nonstick coating on the pan. So according to the brand, cleanup is an absolute breeze. This one has us so excited to entertain this spring and summer. This product is really great. So let's run through the products one more time. The Old Navy 3-in-1 Rockstar Jeans, the Milk Makeup Rise Mascara, the Velvet Headbands, the Heatless Curl Kit, the Va Broom, the Clean Ball, the Wireless Label Maker, and the Pizzazz Pizza Oven. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Editor's Picks and our show today. Here's a sneak peek at next week's episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Shop Today is back, bringing you amazing products, the hottest tips, and inspiring conversations. And now to celebrate Women's History Month, we're highlighting products by incredible female founders from skincare to fashion, jewelry, and more. 
Plus, boxing champ and entrepreneur Layla Ali stops by. What do you think your past has taught you that has brought you to be this incredible businesswoman? I always have this desire to be independent. It's not about just how many hours I work. It's really about how much I put in, how much effort I put into growing these businesses. It took a lot of hard work. It didn't just happen overnight. This is Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of asking. Man, yeah, Who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. You gotta have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice things? Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. I don't want the rap of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. My buddy Cal cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather out. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Wow. Okay. Look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. Ah, the avocado. From toast topping to sweet treats, even mac and cheese, this tasty green fruit is pretty much everywhere. But did you know the most popular variety, the Haas avocado, was developed right here in Southern California. So I came all the way across the country to find out how farmers and restaurant owners are making sure we're enjoying these for years to come. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. We call this right here the avocado tunnel of love. <laughs> In the past 20 years, believe it or not, avocado consumption has tripled in the United States. Today, the average American eats eight pounds of these babies every year. I'm at Rancho Vasquez, one of the oldest avocado orchards in the country. Here, the Vasquez family grows several different varieties. Let's avocado check it out. Oh, welcome to Rancho Vasquez. Art? Yes, nice Art. to meet you. How's it going, sir? Damien Vasquez. Damien, nice welcome to see to you range. guys. Army veteran Art Vasquez has turned his love for avocados into a true family obsession. Four generations live together on this scenic ranch. Many of them work in the orchard and help run the business. I've never been to an avocado farm. Wow. So, this will be gonna, a lot of fun. You guys going to give me a tour? Absolutely. All right, let's go. 
Art's grandfather, Refugio Morones, moved to the U.S. from Mexico in the 1920s. He picked avocados and citrus fruit on several farms, but always dreamed of having his own orchard. When Art was seven, the family purchasing their first acre of this ranch. And that's when my grandfather, Refugio, would start teaching me how to take care of the trees. That's when I, I really started loving picking. My brother and I would pick the avocados, take the avocados down to the town, knocking on doors, selling the avocados. Art put his passion for produce on hold to pursue a career in the auto parts industry. In 2002, he was able to buy the entire property, which was destined to be raised for new houses. We've taken it from 250 trees all the way up to 3,750 trees. This is something, a sustainable legacy that I can leave here and teach my children, grandkids, and the family how to work the earth, how to grow things organically. Art had also saved a piece of Golden State history. Avocados are native to Mexico, but some of the first avocado trees in the U.S. were planted in L.A. County in the mid-1800s. Henry Dalton, a wealthy trader who owned ranches in California, fell in love with the fruit during trips to Central America. In 1848, Henry planted the first avocado tree in Azusa. So when he moved to Los Angeles and he took over and bought Rancho Azusa, he knew there was fresh water coming from the Azusa Canyon. And so because of having the fresh water source and the awesome soil, he knew avocados would be great here. During a tour of the ranch, I got to see a living part of that history. What makes it special is one of the first planted avocado trees in the Western United States. This puppy is one of a kind. It's like us, Al. It's one of a kind, okay. <laughs> and it's still producing fruit? Still producing fruit. It produces anywhere between 500 to six, 700 pounds of fruit a year. Experts estimate this tree is more than 100 years old. It produces a type of avocado known as the fuerte, in Spanish meaning strong. It was the first avocado variety to thrive in the United States because it can withstand cooler temperatures. But in the 1920s, a new variety emerged in SoCal that would ultimately dominate the world market. A guy by the name of Rudolf Haas, he was actually a postal carrier, but his hobby was growing. So he had an orchard at his house about 20 miles from here, La Habra Heights. The Haas avocado was a total accident. An amateur farmer, Rudolph had purchased some mystery avocado seeds. When the tree matured, he was surprised by the dark, bumpy fruit it produced. And that really took off commercially because it has a thicker skin. So for shipping purposes, and it's an amazing tasting fruit. The Fuerte and many other avocados stay green when mature, but the skin on a Haas turns black when ripe, hiding any bruises. It didn't take off right away among consumers in the U.S. So it took a few marketing campaigns for Americans to embrace this creamy variety of the fruit. This fourth, put a little green in your red, white, and blue. Today, 80% of avocados grown worldwide are Haas. Now here, this is one of the first Haas trees commercially ever planted. We've got two Haas trees right here. Until the 90s, the majority of avocados consumed in the country were grown in California and weren't available year round. But all that changed in 1994. President Clinton made NAFTA the law today, linking the United States to Canada and Mexico in one large trading bloc. When NAFTA passed, avocados from Mexico became available everywhere, and folks could enjoy them anytime. Today, even named avocado toast a top trend of the 2010s. Avocado toast. I'm not sure how this happened, but there came a time in the past 10 years when people began to realize that their lives were not complete without it. Thanks to clever campaigns, new diet trends, and an abundant supply, avocado consumption has boomed in the last two decades, growing into a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, 90% of those avocados come from Mexico. However, this has led to major environmental impacts, like deforestation. Rancho Vasquez wants to combat the negative effects of monoculture farming. As an organic orchard, they follow strict guidelines to help protect the land. How have the trees and what you grow 
tried to lessen the impact on the environment. We pick the weeds by hand, or we weed eat, because it's all organic. Yeah. So we don't ever spray any weed killer or anything like that. The deer come and eat all the lower leaves and skirt the trees for us, ah. and they turn that into natural manure. Now, when it comes to picking, avocados require a gentle touch. So we still do it the same high-tech way they did it 100 years ago. Wow. And this is my grandfather's pole. pole right here. Really? Yeah, this is one of the old school ones. So you can pick any of these you want. Okay. So yeah, you just slide it right up till the avocado goes in the basket, and then you pull on the rope. There you go, you're almost there. Pretty difficult, you're doing pretty darn yeah. good, you know? A little bit further, and then pull the rope. There you there go, you is. got it. Good job. <laughs> He's ready to catch. Ta-da! <laughs> there you go. My That's first a nice avocado. One too. It's going to take a week to a week and a half right now to ripen and let it get soft. How about going and tasting some? Yes, sir. We picked some about a week or so, so they'd be perfect for you. All right, let's do it. Believe it or not, there are more than 400 varieties of avocados. Rancho Vasquez in Azusa, California sells six. The Fuerte, Hass, Lamb Hass, Reed, Pinkerton, and Gem. Each has a different shape, taste, and growing season. I've never seen such a, like, a round avocado. The ranch's avocados are prized by chefs and customers for their high oil content. That comes from the area's climate, nutrient-rich mountain soil, and secret farming techniques that have been passed down for generations. The higher the oil content, the better the tasting fruit is. Mm -hmm. And then the longer it'll stay green. You can taste and see the difference with their organic hash. It just keeps it oh, really You can literally fresh. see the oil coming out of it. Yeah, so if you want to try just a little chunk, we'll give you a little chunk. Oh, that's great. Next up, the family favorite. Fuerte. Oh, a real, really a different flavor. Absolutely, absolutely. There's almost, it's almost like a saltiness and a creaminess in there. Aside from his wife's guac, Art's favorite way to eat avos is actually with honey. Ooh. It's called avocado dulce, which is avocado candy. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's fantastic. Isn't it great? I would have never thought of that. Guys, this is just amazing. What does it mean for both of you to to be owners of this of this legacy. This is a legacy I do want to leave. My family, my grandkids, Damien, and this will be around for, I'm hoping and praying, for at least another 100 years, you know? And what does it mean for you, Damien? Oh, it's like he said, just a place where history can keep going. Because the trees were here before us, and they're gonna be here after us, so we're just kind of stewards of the land in the meantime. Let's share a little of this guacamole. Yes, sir. Yep. Let the chips fall where they may, as long as they've got guacamole on them.
Avila's El Ranchito is a Southern California staple that's been in business for more than half a century. They've got 13 locations and counting of this family-run chain, but no two restaurants are exactly the same. Every Avila's owner puts their own spin on the family's traditional Mexican recipes. But here at the Seal Beach Outpost, they claim to have the best guacamole. So I've come to learn their secrets. It's time to guac and roll. Hey there, wow, got a lot of folks here. The aunts, uncles, siblings, and cousins behind Avila's El Ranchito really treat their guests like family. This location is run by Elise Avila Smith, a third generation restaurateur. She credits the family's success to her grandma Margarita's hospitality. You know, she just focused on really what we focus on good, fresh food. Salvador and Margarita, or Mama Avila, immigrated from Mexico to the U.S. in 1958. How did they get into the restaurant business? My father had an opportunity to buy a restaurant and talked to my mother and decided, you know, this is a great opportunity. Salvador using his life savings to purchase the old restaurant property in Huntington Park. He turned to his six kids, including Elise's dad, Victor, for support. We would go after school and help them do whatever needed to be done. And my father was pretty much during the day taking care of the whole restaurant, and my mother was in the kitchen. So she was in the only one in the kitchen. And then, Grandpa Polder was well, washing yeah. dishes. Mama's traditional recipes have been passed down through many generations. They've come from way, way back in Mexico. When it first opened in 1966, Avila's was the only Mexican restaurant in the mostly white neighborhood. Many customers had no interest in Mama's traditional dishes, so she developed a strategy to draw people in. It seemed like natural for my mother to offer the people whatever they wanted, so mm. it was more like a home. If they didn't have it on the menu, then my mother would go in the kitchen and make it anyway. Over the next three decades, the Avila siblings opened six new restaurants in Southern California. This expansion wasn't a coincidence. Americans at the same time were falling in love with Mexican food. In the early 80s, there were an estimated 2,500 Mexican restaurants in the U.S. Today, there are more than 60,000. I was busting tables here as a child. <laughs> Elise witnessed that growth as a kid, watching her dad expand the family business. So I grew up doing homework in a booth. On top of that, I grew up with my grandparents living one street over from me. So I grew up cooking with her for years and years. After college, Elise tried working in other fields, but she was always drawn back to the restaurants. I'd be working by day, you know, I worked for a magazine. And then my brother opened his first restaurant and I ended up serving tables at night. So no matter what I did, I kept ending up back in this business and I loved it. I realized that this was my passion, it's in my blood. How do you qualify to open up a, an obelisk? Well, it's process, let me tell you. <laughs> Is it really? I had to work every position in the restaurant. So I washed dishes, I worked in the kitchen for a few years, so I've done it all. After proving herself for a decade, Elise opened her own Avila's in 2015. When I first opened my restaurant, I worked for several months from about six in the morning till midnight. And finally, I remember my dad and my brother came in for an intervention and said, you need to go home. You gotta sleep. <laughs> you gotta sleep. So I went home and they ran my restaurant for the night. And I knew with my dad and my brother here, there was nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Every Avila's restaurant is unique, reflecting the family member who owns it and the location. They have different decor and specialty menu items. Elise puts her own spin on the brand by offering an extensive tequila cocktail menu. Dad, I'm gonna make you a drink right now. Make it strong. <laughs> Salud, mija. Mm. But there are several dishes you're gonna find at every location. Avocados are crucial to many of the family recipes, including the signature guacamole and their beloved chicken soup. Tell me right. about Mama Avila's soup. That soup that feels like home to me, but it is a chicken breast and rice soup. We make it from scratch every morning, including the broth. We put fresh avocado, cilantro, onion, and tomato in it. And people go, and the first thing they do when they get off the plane is go to have some chicken soup. You mentioned avocado goes into the soup. Tell me about the importance of avocado. It's part of our culture. Bottom line is nobody wants to eat Mexican food without avocado and some guacamole. <laughs> so I'm curious, first you, Victor, what's the secret to a good guacamole? You have to make it, you know, almost really as on a daily basis, almost an hourly basis. 
It needs to be fresh. It needs to be well seasoned. And a little bit of love. I like to think I make a good guac, but I, <laughs> I'm sure I can learn from the best. So how about showing me how you guys do guac? Before making some guac, I enjoyed a cucumber margarita and got a taste of Mama's famous soup. That's great. I would never think about avocado in chicken soup. Oh my God. I can't take credit for that one, Al. That's all grandma. <laughs> all right, you ready to make some guacamole? You bet. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna dump some fresh garlic in here. Okay. This is a traditional mocha hete. From there, you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt Just on top. Just a little bit of salt. Just a little bit of love. And then you're gonna use the top to go ahead and grind it in there. A mocha hete, a Mexican mortar and pestle, is made from volcanic rock. And it's the family secret to great guac. The rough surfaces help crush the ingredients, releasing their natural oils better than chopping them up with a knife. And we're gonna get in some fresh avocado. All right. And then you go ahead and mix that together. And now you gotta be gentle with the oh, avocado soft. With, with some love. Gentle, gentle. In go diced onions, lots of cilantro, and a good squeeze of lime juice. Keep on mixing there, and you got yourself some good, fresh guacamole. I'm gonna dig in here with you too, Al. Mm. Oh yeah. You make good guacamole, Al. <laughs> I've learned from the best. Elise, to be part of something like this, what, what does it mean? Honestly, I feel compelled to keep these beautiful recipes that are from, gosh, my great-great-grandparents running so that everyone that comes to our restaurant is able to taste them and to sit at our table and feel like family and just be a part of ours. Cheers. The ceviche bar a little different from a, a sushi bar. It's like a sushi bar, but more Mexican. Uh huh. <laughs> this lively food court is home to several family-owned hidden gems. In fact, here you'll find Holbush, a modern eatery renowned for its sustainable seafood. The chef behind this vibrant menu pairs flavors from his childhood in Mexico with the freshest of California fare. Gilberto Satina never thought he would dedicate his life to cooking but his summers spent on the Yucatan Peninsula would later inspire a bold move. Since I was a teenager, growing up in a coastal region, I would go diving with my cousins. We would dive down for octopus, uh, we'd get lobsters, we'd get sea snails, and then he would take that back and cook it. And that was one of the first times that I felt a direct connection to food because even back then, there was a disconnect, you know? Right. Food came from the supermarket. And it was the first time I saw something that was like directly from the sea and you can cook it and eat it right away. So that kind of blew my mind. Gilberto immigrated to the U.S. when he was five years old. His father, Gilberto Sr., a former civil engineer, worked various restaurant jobs to support the family. How did your family transition from that kind of grassroots sort of food service to right. a real formal restaurant? It, it really was through the help of the nonprofit that, you know, operates Mercado La Paloma. This bustling market 
is run by Esperanza, or HOPE, a nonprofit dedicated to revitalizing South Los Angeles and helping first-time business owners. They gave us small business training, basic you know, restaurant health department training. They co-signed loans so my dad could purchase the equipment. It was my dad's dream to have a restaurant that represented our Mexican food, the food of the Yucatan, which is very distinct from other regions of Mexico. In 2001, Gilberto Sr. opened the family's first restaurant, Chichen Itza. The menu featuring traditional dishes like conchinita pibil, salbutes, and panuchos. Lo empezamos la mamá de Gilberto y yo, o sea, mi esposa y yo. En, al principio éramos dos personas nada más. They needed help. But Gilberto was reluctant to join the family business. I didn't want to cook. I didn't want to be in the kitchen because I, I grew up in a household where we always, you know, cooking was always used to make ends meet, like a lot of, you know, immigrant families. So when we opened the restaurant and my dad asked me to come along and help him out for six months, I was front of the house. Slowly I just discovered the cooking and that I enjoyed it and, you know, started learning from my dad. Even without formal training, Gilberto quickly learning the ropes, becoming a savvy businessman. 10 years in, Chichen Itza was thriving with dozens of employees. They even released a cookbook. Con el paso de los años, finalmente empezó a sentir la misma pasión que yo tenía por el negocio. After taking over at Chichen Itza, Gilberto was ready for a new challenge, one inspired by those summer boat trips in Mexico. Where does the name Holbosch come from? So Holbos is a place. It's an island off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. He wanted to bring tropical, fresh from the sea vibes, along with an elevated experience, to diners in South Los Angeles. When Holbos opened in the same market, it changed many perceptions of what Mexican food could be. We go outside of the realm of Yucatan and we do food from all different coastal regions of Mexico. Gilberto's fusion dishes allow the freshest fish to shine. Menu staples include seasonal ceviches and an octopus taco. His innovative cooking has wowed locals and critics alike. How does it feel to be nominated for a James Beard Award for this? Mm. After the shock, I think the first thing that I felt was extreme pride in my team. To a certain level, I guess it feels a little bit like validation because we're doing something slightly outside of the box. You look across Mexican cuisine, and, and one of the commonalities is the avocado. Why does the avocado work so well across cuisines in Mexico, but especially your cuisine? The pairing of avocado goes extremely well with raw seafood preparations like ceviches and cocteles, and they're very bright, light, and acidic. I think avocado is the perfect complement because it gives it a little bit, you know, creamy richness. That delicate balance is best represented in the shrimp and scallop aguachiles. And I couldn't wait to try making it. So aguachile is super simple. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, we're gonna make a marinade that's gonna cook or denature our scallops, right? So we're just gonna take some, some cilantro. Uh -huh. Next up, the chili. Serrano peppers bring the heat. Persian cucumbers cool it down. There's a pinch of salt, ice to prevent oxidation, and a squeeze of lime juice. Then the marinade blends for just about a minute. Now, we're just gonna take a bowl. Go ahead and put a couple of uh, spoonfuls of these beautiful Baja California Bay scallops. Ooh, look at those. Now, we're gonna pour the marinade and hold on to the spoon for a stirring. Perfect, that's about right. We wanna let that marinate for at least five minutes. Gilberto takes his agua chile to the next level with an avocado rose. After pitting and peeling, it was time to get slicing. Your knife can be straight because your avocado is at an angle and we're pull oh. cutting. You're just gonna do this, Al. Look. Okay. The key to a great rose, super thin slices. We're hiring, you know. <laughs> okay. Now the next step, hands, right? This, we're gonna do this, this motion. We're gonna fan out the okay. avocado, okay. right? So, can you see that? Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Looking good there. I think that's uh, good enough to roll. You're gonna start at the tip right here, okay. and you just roll this one like that. You see how that's 
forming a really big flower? Yes. This is a pretty advanced skill, but yeah. I think it's one worth practicing. Oh, yeah. And it's a nice party trick, you know? Sure. Impress your friends. Yeah. So, which one should we use? I <laughs> think that one. Made by the professional. Time to plate it up. That's looking beautiful. You're a lot neater doing this than I am. I'll yeah. take like a spoonful of them and just yeah. drop it on there and then arrange them on the plate. Ah, pro tip. And of course, the finishing touches. Wow. This is our scallop aguachile. And I help make it. Can something this pretty taste as good as it looks? Mm, that looks like a good bite. Mm. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. But yet so simple. Thank you, sir. Al, it was a pleasure. Fantastic. The Haas avocado may have started out as a lucky surprise, but for decades, its popularity has been no accident. The Mexican-American culinary traditions passed down through the years have made this delicious and nutritious fruit a staple for so many of us across the country. And thanks to generations of enterprising families, this bumpy green fruit is going to have a very long shelf life. Hi guys, welcome to The Boost, where we start your morning with some positive vibes, feel-good stories that'll leave you with a smile. So, let's start with one that is out of this world. Meet the astronauts who will head out on an historic journey to the moon. Earlier this week, NASA announcing the four astronauts who are going to be taking part in that historic Artemis II mission. And for the first time in more than 50 years, NASA is sending a crew to orbit the moon. It is a 250,000 mile journey that will set up future missions deeper into space. In fact, here's, here's what Commander Reed Wiseman told our Tom Costello about carrying on an important legacy. None of us were born when Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt left the lunar surface in 1972. And our agency talks a lot right now about the Artemis generation, and we are proud to be a part of the Artemis generation. We are the Artemis generation, and we are going back to the moon. And we are so honored to have with us this morning Commander Reed Weissman, Pilot Victor Glover, Mission Specialist Christina Hammock-Cook, and Mission Specialist Jeremy Hansen. Guys, good morning. Hi. Hi. Good to see you. So good to see you. Congratulations. So Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> this is so great. And, and this background yes, and having you great. guys here. Awesome. Uh, you know, Commander, do you realize when you think about this, you guys are going to be re-inspiring a whole generation. I remember sitting there with my family when Neil Armstrong, around 11 o'clock at night, touched down on the moon. You guys are going to be circling it. Do you really, th this is a, a real moment for us. We're, we're calling it the Artemis generation. We're, mm. we're getting to go for the, the kids right now that are in school, motivating, that, motivating them in STEM. Doesn't matter which direction they choose to go. Our, our nation, our world needs teachers. It needs doctors. It needs nurses. It needs engineers. Um, it needs veterinarians, and uh, all of that is really important to us. Al, it's it's a complete honor to get to go do it's this awesome. and hopefully inspire the world right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. I mean, part of the mission is, as we understand it, is going to be sort of helping to establish this long-term presence on the moon, then on Mars as well. How 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 will we know if it's going well? on the mission. Like, what are the indicators that we're looking for? That the spacecraft comes back. <laughs> that's number one. That's job number one. Yeah, that's number one. Yeah. Besides that. Yeah. Well, so along the way, you'll get updates from Mission Control. They'll actually be broadcasting, and we'll have some folks uh, doing uh, announcements about how the mission's going, giving you updates. And you may even get live shots of the crew and outside from the cameras that, that are all around the spacecraft. That's awesome. That is too cool. This is as close as I will ever get to true greatness. But I did hear a rumor mm -hmm. that you guys might not be so great at showing up on time, at least ah. two of you. <laughs> to the, uh, to the oh. So tell me the story about when you found out that you were going to be on this mission and how, how could you possibly show up late to the meeting? Well, <laughs> to keep it secret, uh, there was a different pretext Nothing put on personal. our calendars for this meeting. And yes. so, yes, uh, two out of the three of us showed up late, one not at all. And, uh. um, <laughs> Yeah, we had no idea what was coming. And, and so when you walked in, I mean, was it clear what you were late to? 
immediate. <laughs> wait, they were about to tell you, wait, congratulations, you're going to space? You're go yes. They were about to break the news to us oh, about no. the crew announcement and who had been chosen. We had no idea that was what was coming. Yeah. We weren't sure, of course, That's until funny. we actually heard the words. But when we walked in that room and saw our boss and our boss's boss, we knew we were late to the wrong meeting. <laughs> That's so <laughs> funny. <laughs> kind of a big deal. I didn't, make it, a, big I didn't make it at all. So Not I make come it on, like the video chat, and I see... My boss, my boss's boss. I see Victor, I see Christina. I was like, oh, uh -oh. no. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. They're like, we just wanted to say hi for this meeting. So, Christina, we showed this picture of you earlier in the show. This is back when you were just a little girl. Look at this picture. Oh, yes. You were in space camp. I was. Yeah. How old were you? Do you remember? Probably middle school. Oh. And look at you now. What do you think that little girl would think of the, the woman here on this couch? You know, I remember loving putting on that blue suit at space camp. It was the coolest thing ever to me, and I never thought that it would really happen. I took a very unconventional path to get here, but it was important to me to follow my passions. And that's amazing. Yeah. That's the message I would share. What a, what a journey. Yeah. And, and Victor, speaking of journeys, last time we chatted on the third hour, you just completed this historic six-month mm -hmm. time up in space. You celebrated your birthday yes. uh, up in space. This one's going to be a little shorter. Uh, uh, 10 days. Yes. Uh, how, how are the two going to compare, do you think? Well, like you said, this one will be a lot shorter, uh, but we're going to go a lot faster. You know, you, when they give us the go for TLI, translunar injection, uh, we're going to go about seven miles a second, the speed <sighs> that'll get us to the moon. But it's really interesting because that is the same burn that will get us back to Earth and back into the Pacific Ocean safely. Uh, we won't have a space station that we're going to. The mm -hmm. spacecraft we travel to the moon in is where we will be the entire time testing out the life support systems, habitation, exercise, Size, food, the bathroom, and such. Ah, the bathroom, 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 bathroom. <laughs> paramount. <laughs> Jeremy, what, what are you most excited about with, with regard to the mission? I think we're all really excited about the international collaboration and, like, like Reed said, just inspiring the world and, and trying to bring people together. It's just such an amazing example of great American leadership to lift up other countries to make space for others to yeah. shine and contribute. And that is, we have global problems on this planet right now, and yeah. we need global solutions, and this is going to be a shining example of how we can do better as a human race. Here. And Jeremy, you the pride of Canada. So... Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's really highlighted uh, the work of the Canadian Space Agency, but showing Canadians what the entire country can accomplish. That's a great That's picture. Awesome. That's a great picture. That's, That's fantastic. Great. Good on you guys. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. What were you about to say? I was going to say, he's the pride of our crew. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I will say. He, he does look a little Buzz like you. <laughs> there he I did say earlier, I said, they, they couldn't have picked a, a more beautiful bunch yeah, I know, of people. Yeah, like, <laughs> like straight out of Central Casting. I was just about to say, Central Casting. I can't right wait there. to see the action figures. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, well crew done, of Artemis 2, thank you so much. We are so thank proud you. of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. From a mission to the moon to an astronaut reaching for the stars, Peggy Whitson coming out of retirement to jet into space again. Kate Snow has her story. This is actually the, what the interior module. This astronaut Peggy Whitson is showing me what no news crew has seen before. Inside the Axiom Space Engineering Building, a mock-up of a module for the first commercial space station. At 63, Whitson has spent more time in space than any other person in America. We go around the Earth about once every 90 minutes. The first female commander of the International Space Station, she's completed 10 spacewalks. And I see 3217. When we first met four years ago, she had retired from NASA. What's left for you? Hopefully space again. <laughs> I remember you distinctly said, I would really like to go back, but I'm not quite sure how. And now here you are. Yeah, no, luckily there's a way. Um, with the development of commercial space, there are lots of opportunities out there. Now she's taken her years of NASA experience to Axiom Space as director of human spaceflight. She'll now be the first female commander of a private space mission, Axiom Mission 2. You never really did want to retire. Not really, no. I love going into space. It's, uh, it's actually where I've always felt the most at home in terms of, you know, a job to do. And I'm actually pretty good at it, so that works out. In coordination with NASA, she'll lead a four-person team for the 10-day privately funded mission to the International Space Station. Their research in orbit will help Axiom build a more modern commercial space station that would replace the current one. It's pretty exciting to be a part of that. Liftoff is scheduled for Sunday on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. Whitson's advice? Keep pushing your boundaries. Are you still challenging yourself? Absolutely, absolutely. A little out of your comfort zone? Yes, <laughs> yes, definitely. I think that's one of the biggest messages uh, 
for success is to challenge yourself to not just do what you know you can because you're capable of more than you know. Kate Snow, NBC News, Houston. Coming up, we're going to introduce you to the man behind a mindfulness movement right after the break. the boost meet the mindfulness author and podcast host case kenny he's helping people lead more intentional and purposeful lives through simple steps that we can all learn from chanel jones has that story i joke that i'm a man who shares his feelings for a living that's my self-prescribed title for 35 year old chicago native case kenny the key to mastering mindfulness is to talk about everything so how does one become a mindfulness author? It was just kind of one of those points in life where I was like, it would be really unfortunate if I were to look back in 10, 20, 30 years and realize that I was doing things, dating people, working a career that really wasn't true to me in a sense. So Kay started the New Mindset Who Dis podcast in 2018, a place where he could challenge himself to work out his day-to-day -day problems. I realized what I was doing, which was I was practicing mindfulness. It, you know, kind of intimidated me, but it's basically just the art of being present and being judgment-free to yourself so that you could find clarity in some form. As he kept posting, Case's listeners grew, and with the podcast now totaling over 30 million downloads, Case has since used his platform to challenge others to talk it out and put their own mental health at the top of the list. I love the focus on mental health, conversations around mental health, has are having in culture and I like seeing more men come around to it so I'm excited a couple years from now just to see how many people are practicing their own form of mindfulness. So the fact that it was so successful did you expect that? The fact that it resonated with so many people and continues to resonate with so many people really surprised me but I think it speaks to the the larger need in culture and society that I think a lot of people really want to do these things they just don't necessarily know how to get started and they need a, a relatable first step. Wanting to provide folks with that first step, Case created guided journals with titles like Unbother, But First Inner Peace, and even Single is Your Superpower. Journaling is so powerful because it's bringing a thought from your mind into your hand, into a pen on paper. Your latest book is called That Bold of You, about letting go of what you're not. It came from a lot of the feedback from people who listen to my podcast, who have said basically something to the extent of, I feel like I'm too much or I'm too difficult. So I called the book That's Bold of You because it's a bold thing to push back on the labels that have been given to us. A few years ago, he also started posting his words of wisdom on Instagram. I've kind of become known as, as a quote guy. So I've just realized that there's power in writing these silly little quotes, putting them up around Chicago or Miami or New York, and just reminding people of these things that we intuitively know, but maybe hearing it in a different way, maybe hearing it said in a slightly different version. That's what makes it click. And they've clicked with more than 480,000 followers, including the likes of Lucy Hale, Haley Bieber, and Viola Davis. I'm also impressed with like how creative you are. I'm like, oh, a coffee cup. That's a good place for yeah. a quote, like just right there. I was like, what are things that we touch and feel so I started writing on coffee cups, and then I was like, well, yeah, I've got more to say, so I need a little more surface area, so I started doing paper. But for Case, the biggest reward 
is making a difference in the lives of others. People have said that my words changed their life or helped them get out of an unhealthy relationship or find their soulmate or just be happier, uh, which of course I can't take credit for. You know, they're the ones doing it, but hearing things like that is just so powerful. And I think that is just an amazing thing to witness. Coming up next, former NFL athlete Ryan Mundy opens up about his own mental health journey and how it inspired him to help others. Take a look. I accomplished my dream in my hometown and won a Super Bowl there, right? And I've made money and I have insurance and I have all these things at my disposal and I'm still not okay. Ryan Mundy, an eight-year NFL veteran, knows a little something about playing with heart. What he did not know was how to deal with all that was happening inside his head. How did you get into football? I started playing football at the age of seven. After making All-American at his Pittsburgh High School, Ryan played four seasons at the University of Michigan, then one season at West Virginia before the NFL came calling in 2008. It's quite rare for someone to get drafted by their hometown team. It was quite surreal. I used to go to Three River Stadium and take donations for my Pop Warner football team. And I would see the players pulling up in their fancy cars. And I was like, one day that's gonna be me. Ryan became a Super Bowl champion with the Steelers in 2009, going on to play six more seasons in the game, including one with the New York Giants and two as a Chicago Bear. Being a professional athlete, we all know the, the discipline that it takes. Yeah. And then, of course, there's a, the physical aspect of it as well. There's also a mental aspect. Yep. What kind of toll did playing take on, on that part of, of Ryan Lundy? I developed a really high tolerance for pain and being in uncomfortable situations. And that's great, but then you have to acknowledge, hey, like, I'm not okay, or I'm not feeling like myself. And in that sport, hyper-masculinity, sometimes that's a difficult conversation to have. I've heard that oftentimes NFL players face a bit of a, an identity crisis when they decide to hang up the cleats. What was your experience? Very much the same, but the NFL offers these executive education programs that I was taking advantage of. I even got an MBA at the University of Miami, Florida, all while I was an active athlete. I was dealing with anxiety, I was dealing with depression, I was dealing with identity issues, and smiling on the outside, but struggling on the inside. And also during this time, my family was going through a list of chronic conditions. And so I reflected back on like my exposure in the venture capital space, where a lot of money flows to solve big problems. And I didn't see any money flowing to solve my problem or the problem that my family was going through. In October 2020, Ryan launched Alchemy, a mental health platform designed to meet the needs of the black community. Why is there such a glaring void in the mental health care space for the black community? Finding culturally intelligent care, folks who can understand your experience, really challenging proposition, less than 4% of psychologists are black, less than 2% of psychiatrists are black, but then also mental health and wellness support is very expensive. Alchemy aims to even out the playing field of mental health practices, offering content from meditations to courses on relationships and more from clinical experts that look like him. I think we have gotten to a point where we talk about the need for therapy. And the reality is, a lot of people who need to do that, they don't have insurance or they don't have a job. First of all, where they can leave for an hour in the middle of the day yeah. or they can afford it on a regular basis. Therapy is a luxury. But how do you fix that? We think about innovative approaches like, okay, well, what are we calling therapy? Things can be therapeutic that aren't necessarily therapy. Changing deep-rooted ideas about mental health may be harder than playing pro football, but Ryan is hopeful. You've got two kids, I've got two kids. One of the things that I, I always worry about is they seem fine on, yeah. on the outside, but I don't know yeah. what's going on in here. How do you make sure that your kids are mentally healthy? Yeah, talking to them. They didn't have an opportunity to see me as an active NFL athlete, uh, but now again, they have a front row seat to what it looks like to be a black entrepreneur in America, right? And so like, particularly, I gotta walk the walk. And so like, I meditate with my kids. I talk openly with, about my kids. Uh, we make sure that they have the things that they need for them to be the best and highest version of themselves. Still ahead, we are taking a trip to New York's Long Island for a visit to a very special summer camp. Stay with us.
Welcome back to The Boost. Our next story comes from New Jersey, the home of Buddy Baseball. It's an inspiring league welcoming players with special needs and adding a whole new meaning to the word team. Joe Fryer has the story. Baseball has always been considered a team sport. But in Bayonne, New Jersey, team takes on a whole new meaning. What's the best part about baseball? Hit the ball. We're going to go this way, okay? Pete Amadeo is the town's recreation superintendent, the guy who made this league for kids with special needs a hit. You got this. Step on third, step on third. Nice. They call it buddy baseball because players are paired with volunteers who help them round the bases. Coming here, I was struck by just how many people were on the field. It really gives that community feel, right? Buddy baseball is 100% community. Everybody comes out. All of Bayonne knows what buddy baseball is, and the support we have is incredible. Colin. Come on, Colin, you got it, buddy. Good right. job, Colin. For Colin Gerbis and his dad, Chris, it's a game changer. It's a wonderful way to get these kids together and to, to build lasting friendships. How many hits do you have? Do you have a lot of hits? Two hits today. How does it feel to get all those hits? Good. Go, 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 go. As for the buddies, on this day, they come from the town's high school teams and the fire department. It's been one of my favorite days of the year so far, just the enthusiasm that these people bring, just to see the smiles on their faces when they get you know all around and then they finally touch home. Oh! That's a great slide, oh! And that's the thing. Every player gets a hit every time. And eventually, Come on, Mariah. makes it home. Good job, Mariah. I didn't see anyone ever get out. No one makes it out. We're all safe. That's an important word, safe. We're all safe. And when you come to the field, you know, we do feel safe with one another. Here we go. One, two, three. Good job, Good job. That inclusivity means a lot to Maddie Klein and his mom. Yes! You want the best for your kids and you want them to be happy and you want people to see them the way you see them. To have an environment where they're celebrated for exactly who they are, that's probably the goal of most of us. On opening day, they even had a parade, one of the biggest events in town, celebrating a sport where, instead of the score, it's the community that counts. One, two, three, With summer upon us, Joel Gargiulo is taking us to a very special summer camp out on Long Island. It is called Camp Anchor. It's for kids with special needs, led by an incredible staff and passionate volunteers. Take a look. Good morning, everyone. If you've ever spent a day at Camp Anchor, describing it comes easy. The greatest place on earth. Love. Camp Anchor is happy. If you can't already tell, there's an energy in the air, an infectious spirit. The minute the children and the adults get off the bus, it's, it's pure joy. They can let their guard down. They can just be themselves. They have different disabilities, but the abilities, they shine. Camp Anchor staff and its 275 volunteers Let's go, Joe. spend their six weeks of summer leading and teaching over 750 campers, all with special needs. This is my 32nd summer. What do you love about it? Uh, it's the kids. It's just coming down here and seeing their smiles that really kind of change your, your perspective of things, makes you realize what's important. What's the age range of campers? Um, six to whenever. Look, he's like a hog. Hog. You can stay until you want. Give me an idea of day to day, what happens here? You can have dance, you have sports, fitness, drama, home ec. Anchor has been serving this Long Island, New York community for over 50 years. It's a special bond here, and it truly is, and in the words of these campers, a magical place to be. And its heart lies with its campers, like 11-year-old Gavin Sands, who was born with Down syndrome. Gavin is truly our greatest joy. He's our fourth child. 
Camp Anchor is a place where I know that he's safe. He's given so many opportunities to shine and to build his confidence. We feel happy, we feel blessed and grateful. The things he does here empowers him to, to see that he can, he can do anything. And for the Sands, Camp Anchor is a family affair. I've been working here for six years. This is my second summer here. This is my first summer. What is it like when you see your brother at camp? I love seeing Gavin at camp. I always run up to him and give him a hug. It's so nice to be in a place where we're all together and Gavin's so accepted and it's so inclusive. This camp inspires so many people to like go into the special education field as their profession. I'm actually becoming a special education teacher, so I want to be here literally for the rest of my life. When Gavin comes home and you say, okay, tell me about your day today at Camp Anchor, what's a typical response? I have the best day ever, and that's every day days that Gavin and his volunteer buddy Katya enjoy. Can I hang with you? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> Filled with music. <laughs> Get your jumps up. Some and animal down. yoga. <laughs> and the main event, surfing. <laughs> How do you feel when you're on the surfboard? I feel happy. To know that your son has a place like this to go to, what does that mean to you both? It's like he's, he's family from the very day he got here. It's like him being home. I mean, this is home for them. Anchor is my second family. Yeah, nice work! You come here and you just have that feeling of, I'm accepted. You know, I'm allowed to be here. There's a quote when you come in that reads, to the world you may be one person, but to one person you may be the world. And I think that just captures the essence of this beautiful camp that allows these campers to form incredible friendships, not only with other campers, but with the staff, the volunteers, the administration, and they form these friendships and memories that they'll treasure forever. Coming up, the latest viral video to make you smile throughout the day, that's right after the break. Welcome back to The Boost. We have one more video and we promise it'll put a smile on your face. Check it out. So a former high school cross country runner who was paralyzed after a car crash two years ago fulfilled his promise this week. He walked across the stage at his graduation. That's amazing. Noble Haskell right there picked up his diploma at the commencement ceremony. All of his classmates, his family and friends cheering him on. He's been working so hard over the last two years. He wanted that moment and he got it, but it doesn't end there. Noble says he will run again. Wow, that wow. this, as he says, is just the beginning I of believe his journey. Yeah, Me too. Uh, I'm going to go Noble. Imagine how yes. much hard work went into yeah. that moment. Uh, that is it for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more of our favorite feel-good stories. We'll see you right here next time on Today All Day.
I'm Shop All Day contributor Chassie Post, and each week I'm here with the must-have fashion and beauty products at a price you'll like in Style Finder. I'm Shop All Day contributor Makon Jovu, and I'm bringing you industry insiders and those in the know to share all the buzzworthy products sweeping social media and influencer trends. And I'm Shop Today editorial director Adriana Brock, and I know shopping trends. I seek out new and notable products so you don't have to in editor's picks. This is Shop All Day, what's buzzing on social media. Hi, I'm Chassie Post, and we're back today with a new episode of Shop All Day. All about those products we've seen on social media and wondered whether to add to cart. Well, we rounded out our favorite trending items from lip gloss, yes, it's making a comeback, to flared leggings, also popular again. And remember, see that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get to it. Watermelon has been a mega trend when it comes to beauty products. And we have seen all things watermelon taking social media by storm. Now, watermelon sleeping masks are at the top of the social media heap. And few sleeping masks have received as much hype as the Glow Recipe Watermelon Glow Sleeping Mask. It's a TikTok star in its own right with over 2.2 million views and fans say it's worth the hype. But I gotta tell you, this sleeping mask had me at the word sleeping. I mean, who doesn't love a product that goes to work when you hit the hay? And the brand says that this product not only is designed to help make your skin feel smoother, but it helps to refine pores. And they also say that it helps to brighten your skin and also exfoliate. Plus, it's got an impressive list of ingredients that includes real watermelon extract and even hyaluronic acid and AHAs, which is really glycolic acid. And I've got to tell you the scent. It smells so good. It's like fresh watermelons. And this product isn't just a social media star. It's a star in real life. Yep, it's got 73,000 likes on Sephora.com. Okay, now get ready for another TikTok star that beauty lovers are obsessed with. The Dior Addict Lip Glow Oil and this cult and celeb fave has a hashtag with over 73 million views and climbing. And lip gloss is making a huge comeback. And this ultra shiny gloss has been selling out everywhere. And here's what gets everybody so excited about it. It's a multitasker. It's like a lip gloss and a lip care product all in one. And the brand says that the lip oil is infused with cherry oil. So it nourishes and protects and softens the lips while adding a natural color finish. In fact, the brand also says that the lip oil is formulated to adapt to all lip colors to bring out one's own unique and rosy glow. And one of the reasons why lip gloss is having such a big comeback, in my opinion, is we are seeing so much gloss. I mean, on the face, that's been a really big trend, that sort of shiny trend. So it makes sense that it would also transfer to the lips. So now let's talk hair love. There's a lot of love out there for this next product as well as for its founder. These are the Nourishing Shine Drops from JVN, which is brought to you by hair guru and TV personality, Jonathan Van Ness. And the brand is so popular that the hashtag for this brand alone boasts over 10.8 million views. And I just love Jonathan's positivity and his enthusiasm and the brand's inclusive vibe. And I also love what the brand has to say about the product, that it makes your hair look like it's lit from within. I mean, shoppers really do rave about how these drops really bring about a rich glow and shine. And if you have a minute, you've got to check out the how-to videos on the site. Jonathan shows you exactly how to use this product, and it's so easy. I mean, you just take a few drops, and then you put them into your hands, you rub them together, 
And he says to take your hands and just rub it down from sort of the mid shaft down to the ends and work it through. And Jonathan also says that this can be used on all hair types. And the brand says that the product also helps to smooth, frizz bust, and hydrate. Now, next up, we have another trending and affordable accessory that, in my humble opinion, has the capability to transform any outfit in an instant. Yes, the pattern tight is having quite a moment, and we're seeing some major traction from not only social media, but also from high-end designers. And what I love the most about this trend is that you can get in on this designer runway look without the designer price tag. I've actually seen pattern tights from high-end designers starting at $200 up to even $2,500. So forgive me if I get really excited that we've got such affordable options here. So here we have a selection of really great looking pattern tights. Everything from a herringbone to a beautiful lace to a heart motif. And we're seeing lots of heart motifs out there. That's a big trend even on its own. And my favorite way to wear them is to pair them with, say, last year's little black dress, right? And suddenly the look is transformed, it's updated. I love wearing these with trousers, especially crop trousers. So you can kind of see the pattern tight peeking out. And you know another really cool way to wear them? You can actually wear them with jeans and distressed jeans. Oh my gosh, they look so cool. You could see the pattern tight through some of the holes. It really is a little fashion trick that I love. Next, we've got a favorite from the aughts that are making a major comeback. I may have called them yoga pants, but Gen Z has dubbed them the flared legging. But one thing's for sure, whatever you call them, they are massive social media stars. So let me introduce you to the airy, real me, high-waisted crossover flare legging, and this style is a double winner. So not only does it have that great flare silhouette, Check it out, it has that crossover waistband that has become so incredibly popular. So the brand says that these leggings are made out of their real me fabric, and they say it has light support, and this fabric feels really buttery. So it's a really versatile legging. You can wear it hanging out, you can wear it to the gym, you can definitely wear it while you're doing yoga. So I totally get why these are so popular. So now for a sneak peek at spring, let's talk about an incredibly popular shoe that encompasses four big viral trends in one. This it shoe has been on the scene for a while now and thanks to its popularity both on social media and on celebs, we don't see it going anywhere. So let me tell you about what those four trends are. First of all, we've got that mule style, the mule silhouette, which is just really slip in and easy to wear. Also, check out these braided straps, the double strap. They're also kind of padded, so that's another massive trend that we're seeing. Also, the block heel. It's a lot easier to wear than the stiletto, especially if we're transitioning from sneakers. And another big trend that we're seeing everywhere is this squared toe sole here. And I really like all of these sophisticated neutrals, and these are essentially a designer dupe. And lastly, I really think that they look expensive. So this is a great viral trend to try out coming up this spring. And this next must-have is one of the coolest fashion gadgets I've run across in a long time. It's the Nori Press, and it has changed the game in both design and innovation. And it is no wonder that it has over 1.4 million views on TikTok. And it's a wrinkle-removing tool. And it's like a cross between an iron and a steamer. And Boy, do I wish I had one of these when I first started out in my fashion career as an assistant to a celebrity stylist. I can tell you guys that I spent about 90% of my time steaming. So I got well acquainted with the conventional steamers and I gotta tell you, pretty much all of them leak. So I was thrilled to try out the Nori and I think the design is just so cool. I mean, look at that. It almost looks like a straightening iron and it works like one too. And one of the things I like so much about when I use this is it's just really easy and it also irons 
both sides of the fabric at once. So you just clamp it onto the fabric and just pull it down. And oh my gosh, it really is a game changer in the world of ironing and steaming. You don't even need an ironing board. So I love that ease. Plus it's 1.4 pounds, so it's great for travel. You can throw it in your bag and go. So let's go through these products one more time. And you can use the QR code to get instant access to these items. We've got the Glow Recipe Sleeping Mask, the Dior Lip Oil, the JVN Nourishing Shine Drops, the Pattern Tights, the Offline by Airy Flare Leggings, the Women's Braided Heeled Sandals, and the Nori Press Steam Iron. And just so you know, today works with affiliate partners and earns commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. And that's it for Style Finder. Up next, designer and lifestyle influencer Vanita Aspen is chatting with Mako and Lovu about some of her favorite must-have products. Welcome back. I'm Makon Jovu, and this is Influencer Trends, where I'll be talking to industry insiders, and they'll share their favorite products and the must-have items to shop for right now. Now, you may know her from Southern Charm, designer and lifestyle influencer, Vanita Aspen is here with us to talk all things Southern style and more. And don't forget the QR code on the corner of your screen. Use the camera on your smartphone and scan it to shop these products, or you can text SHOP to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. Vanita, it's such a pleasure to have you here. How are you today? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm doing great. Listen, I remember the first time I saw you on social media, I was like, wait a minute, who is this gorgeous girl? So I had to hit that follow button. What do you think, you have a huge social media following, what do you think gets people to sort of gravitate towards you? I think people gravitate towards me because I choose not to stick within an aesthetic and like I'm different every day. I show the ins and outs of daily life and the fact that everything's just not perfect. 
I love that. And I love the, um, the photos that you have of you and your mom. So cute. And then you also show a style as well. What's the key to looking pulled together? The key to looking put together is always jewelry. You have to wear like some form of earring or bracelet. That helps pull the entire look together. So if you're not feeling too strong about it, an accessory will definitely help. I agree with that. Accessories are like the cherry on top. Now, Southern right. Charm fans would just not have it if I didn't ask you. Are you gonna see more of you on the show? I don't know, you're gonna have to watch it. Oh, okay, <laughs> a nice little tease there. I'm here for it. Okay, speaking of things to watch, I love these items that you brought for today's show. Can we start with these portable chargers? A great deal yeah. for two of them. You yeah. get two, I chose the black and white ones. They charge super quick and they're really lightweight so they don't like weigh the bag down. I feel like a lot of portable chargers are too heavy and this is like a great weight. Absolutely, and I think they're great for every household. If you think how many people in your house have devices, so it's nice to always have chargers. All right, let's move on from charges to something that charges my life, which is makeup. This blush that you brought here, okay, first of all, you look gorgeous. I have it I on. To say that. Right, you have it on? Okay, but why have cream on. over powder? Cream over powder because cream looks more natural. And I love this blush because two reasons. You get a lot of product and it's super affordable at $6. Oh. And the pigmentation is unmatched. I mean, I'm swatching it right here and I have to agree with you about the pigmentation. It's unmatched. And I like this for all ages too. It looks great on everybody, even if you have mature skin. It's beautiful. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things I am guilty of, Vanita, is not cleaning my devices, even my sunglasses. I love this next pick, tell me about it. Okay, so the next pick is just so good, and I love the fact that it comes with microfiber tiles, so you make sure that there's no lint or anything like that on your screen or on your sunglasses when you're done wiping your products down. Oh, I love that. Look at how it just cleaned my sunglasses. I'm so guilty of having foggy glasses, so this is a <laughs> lifesaver. Okay, speaking of lifesavers, let's talk about being in the kitchen. A lot of people don't really like prep work when it comes to cooking. This vegetable chopper, I'm obsessed. Also, like to give you a little background, I went to culinary school. Oh. So like, look at that. I love all the little fun inventions for the kitchen. And I feel like this vegetable chopper is a lifesaver for everyone because one, no one likes to chop onions. No one likes to chop potatoes and it just makes it so simple. It has like, this little square here and it comes with different size like blades you can see right here and it's just perfect and it's easy to clean oh i love that onions make me cry is that crazy but it's true to this day they still make me cry so i love that yes and then a little tip for you is to either run your onion under hot water or put it in the freezer right before you cut it so I shouldn't say the fumes, but like the aroma that right. they come out quickly. <laughs> I know what you mean, I know what you mean. And last but not least, you talk about jewelry being the key to looking pulled together. You have this jewelry organizer, which I think is fantastic. Yes, it comes in three different shapes. Um, so I also, I have one for both bracelets, necklaces, and earrings. And it's just so easy and things don't get tangled up and you just don't have to think about it when you're gonna get dressed and put your accessories on. I find that it saves me money too because I'll go out to the store, I'll shop online and be like, wait, I already have that because I can see it in my jewelry organizer. Well, Vanita, thank you so much for joining us. What else are you up to? What else are you working on next? Right now, I am working on an adaptive wear brand. So that's a project that nice. is keeping me busy. Oh, that's awesome. Listen, we look forward to following you and good luck with all your ventures. We'll see you really soon. Thank you so much. All right, bye. All right, now let's run through the products one more time. The portable charger, the e.l.f. Cosmetics Cream Blush, the Woosh Screen Cleaner Kit, the Full Star Vegetable Chopper, the Strata Life Jewelry Organizer. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. Up next, Adriana Brock has more popular products in editor's picks, like a cordless vacuum that weighs just three pounds, just in time for spring cleaning. Don't go away.
everyone, welcome back. I'm Adriana Brock, and we have been sharing those products we can't get enough of that we've discovered on social media. I have some more favorites from Old Navy's new three-in-one jeans, more on that in a bit, to the Va Broom, just in time for spring cleaning. See that QR code on the corner of your screen? You can use the camera on your smartphone to scan it for instant access to the products on the show today. Or you can text shop to the number below to shop all the products we're sharing with you today. So let's get started. Finding the perfect pair of jeans doesn't have to be hard and Old Navy is making it easier than ever with the new Fits You denim collection. Each pair is designed to fit three different sizes to adjust to your perfect shape. This one features the best-selling Rockstar Skinny Cut, which has a flattering high-rise fit and a wallet-friendly price. And moving on to some beauty finds, Milk Beauty is one of those popular beauty brands taking over social media, and their new launch is no exception. The brand's brand new Rise Mascara is a vegan mascara that, according to the brand, is formulated to lift, lengthen, and curl lashes with weightless volume. And according to the brand, all you need is a few coats and you don't have to worry about clumping or smudging for up to 12 hours. And when it comes to accessorizing, a cute headband is the perfect way to add a little pop to any outfit. And it helps amp up a good hair day. The knotted headband trend isn't going anywhere, but pearls are actually the latest accessory that's taking over the fashion world. So with this one, you get two trends with this chic find. And you get a set of four for about $15. And if you're like me, you're probably gonna wear these all the time. And staying on the topic of hair, Heatless curlers are having an unexpected social media hit this season. These come with a set of 28 heatless waivers and all you need is about 20 for a full head of hair. And according to the brand, to use it, all you have to do is grab small sections of damp hair and weave it into the curler using the tool. And in about an hour, you're gonna get a full head of waves and curls. And you've gotta see the results to believe them. And you don't have to be on hashtag clean talk to appreciate this next find. It's a two-in-one cleaning tool that's simply genius. It's a lightweight cordless broom with a built-in mini vacuum that will have you ditching that dustpan for good. The Va Broom does all the work for you. So once you're done sweeping, you just tilt the broom on its side and it sucks up all the dirt and debris in one go. Voila. Household chores have never been so much easier. And speaking of chores, if you're like me and your handbag is probably a catch-all for everything and it can get dirty so fast, this clean ball is really cool because it's designed to pick up dirt and crumbs, everything that's floating around in that bag. All you have to do is pop it in your purse. You can even use it in the kid's backpack and it does all the work for you. And the brand says, what's really great about this too is you can reuse it. You just pop it open, you wash it, and you can use it over and over again. And we all wanna get organized and labels make the job so much easier. So whether you're tackling your file cabinet or a spice rack, this little wireless label maker is absolutely incredible. It creates labels using an app that lets you customize everything from size, font, and even symbols. And you know we love a QR code and this one can actually make one. Last but certainly not least is this pizza maker that's taking TikTok by storm. It is one of those things you wish you had discovered sooner. It's a rotating pizza oven and it makes delicious crispy pies in about 25 minutes. But it can also be used to cook other snacks like chicken wings and quesadillas, grilled sandwiches, and even a cookie pie. It comes with a self timer and a nonstick coating on the pan. So according to the brand, cleanup is an absolute breeze. This one has us so excited to entertain this spring and summer. This product is really great. So let's run through the products one more time. The Old Navy 3-in-1 Rockstar Jeans, the Milk Makeup Rise Mascara, the Velvet Headbands, the Heatless Curl Kit, the Va Broom, the Clean Ball, the Wireless Label Maker, and the Pizzazz Pizza Oven. And just so you know, Today works with affiliate partners and earns a commission on purchases made through our links at today.com. That's it for Editor's Picks and our show today. Here's a sneak peek at next week's episode of Shop Today with Jill Martin. Shop Today is back, bringing you amazing products, the hottest tips, and inspiring conversations. And now to celebrate Women's History Month, we're highlighting products by incredible female founders from skincare to fashion, jewelry, and more. 
Plus, boxing champ and entrepreneur Layla Ali stops by. What do you think your past has taught you that has brought you to be this incredible businesswoman? I always have this desire to be independent. It's not about just how many hours I work. It's really about how much I put in, how much effort I put into growing these businesses. It took a lot of hard work. It didn't just happen overnight. This is Shop Today with me, Jill Martin. Welcome to Today All Day. All Day? Today All Day. All Day. This is a long oh, way of man. asking, yeah. who's your okay. favorite character you've ever oh, played? The right. unicorn. The unicorn. you got to have the unicorn. <laughs> What is she right there? That's why you're saying all these nice yeah, things. Yeah, she gave me the, the look. Sorry to disturb your day. Everyone's mad at you, Willie. Better make this fast. Yeah. I don't want the rap of Luna. When I see you, I always think, I wonder what his quote would be. Give us six minutes and we'll ask as many questions as we can. Welcome to Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Cold Cuts. Hi, buddy Cal. Cooking with me. Dad's no babysit. It's called parenting. What was the first book you remember loving? Heart Smart Today, with simple exercises to strengthen your heart. Make the most of your beach days. It's all about the tracksuit oh, now. How wow. good do they look? I now pronounce you husband and wife. Kiss the bride. This morning, a story of people helping people. You've received tons of letters from people who have been inspired. Let's do a weather app. <laughs> OK. All you got to do is say, it's cold, it's warm, it's raining, it's snowing. That's it. One of our most favorite yes. franchises ever, wow. Ambush Makeovers. Okay. <laughs> look at it. It doesn't, it doesn't look so good. No, it doesn't look good. <laughs> will you okay. judge us in a cook-off? I yeah. will. And okay. you guys will definitely win something. Today, all day. All day? All day. Welcome to Today, All Day. The avocado, from toast topping to sweet treats, even mac and cheese, this tasty green fruit is pretty much everywhere. But did you know the most popular variety, the Haas avocado, was developed right here in Southern California. So I came all the way across the country to find out how farmers and restaurant owners are making sure we're enjoying these for years to come. It's time to head out of Studio 1A and hit the road for a new kind of culinary adventure. Follow me as I taste some of the most iconic foods around the country and meet the families behind them. Together, we're going to learn how a good meal has the power to connect us to our past, our future, and each other. We call this right here the Avocado Tunnel of Love. <laughs> In the past 20 years, believe it or not, avocado consumption has tripled in the United States. Today, the average American eats eight pounds of these babies every year. I'm at Rancho Vasquez, one of the oldest avocado orchards in the country. Here, the Vasquez family grows several different varieties. Let's avocado check it out. Oh, welcome to Rancho Vasquez. Art? Yes, Nice Art. to meet you. How's it going, sir? Damien Vasquez. Damien, nice welcome to see to you range. guys. Army veteran Art Vasquez has turned his love for avocados into a true family obsession. Four generations live together on this scenic ranch. Many of them work in the orchard and help run the business. I've never been to an avocado farm. Wow. So uh, it'll be gonna, a lot of fun. You guys gonna give me a tour? Absolutely. All right, let's go. 
Art's grandfather, Refugio Morones, moved to the U.S. from Mexico in the 1920s. He picked avocados and citrus fruit on several farms, but always dreamed of having his own orchard. When Art was seven, the family purchasing their first acre of this ranch. And that's when my grandfather, Refugio, would start teaching me how to take care of the trees. That's when I, I really started loving picking. My brother and I would pick the avocados, take the avocados down to the town, knocking on doors, selling the avocados. Art put his passion for produce on hold to pursue a career in the auto parts industry. In 2002, he was able to buy the entire property, which was destined to be raised for new houses. We've taken it from 250 trees all the way up to 3,750 trees. This is something, a sustainable legacy that I can leave here and teach my children, grandkids, and the family how to work the earth, how to grow things organically. Art had also saved a piece of Golden State history. Avocados are native to Mexico, but some of the first avocado trees in the U.S. were planted in L.A. County in the mid-1800s. Henry Dalton, a wealthy trader who owned ranches in California, fell in love with the fruit during trips to Central America. In 1848, Henry planted the first avocado tree in Azusa. So when he moved to Los Angeles and he took over and bought Rancho Azusa, he knew there was fresh water coming from the Azusa Canyon. And so because of having the fresh water source and the awesome soil, he knew avocados would be great here. During a tour of the ranch, I got to see a living part of that history. What makes it special is one of the first planted avocado trees in the Western United States. This puppy is one of a kind. It's like us, Al. It's one of a kind, <laughs> okay. And it's still producing fruit? Still producing fruit. It produces anywhere between 500 to six, 700 pounds of fruit a year. Experts estimate this tree is more than 100 years old. It produces a type of avocado known as the fuerte, in Spanish meaning strong. It was the first avocado variety to thrive in the United States because it can withstand cooler temperatures. But in the 1920s, a new variety emerged in SoCal that would ultimately dominate the world market. A guy by the name of Rudolf Haas, he was actually a postal carrier, but his hobby was growing. So he had an orchard at his house about 20 miles from here, La Habra Heights. The Haas avocado was a total accident. An amateur farmer, Rudolf had purchased some mystery avocado seeds. When the tree matured, he was surprised by the dark, bumpy fruit it produced. And that really took off commercially because it has a thicker skin. So for shipping purposes, and it's an amazing tasting fruit. The Fuerte and many other avocados stay green when mature, but the skin on a Haas turns black when ripe, hiding any bruises. It didn't take off right away among consumers in the U.S. So it took a few marketing campaigns for Americans to embrace this creamy variety of the fruit. This fourth, put a little green in your red, white, and blue. Today, 80% of avocados grown worldwide are Haas. Now here, this is one of the first Haas trees commercially ever planted. We've got two Haas trees right here. Until the 90s, the majority of avocados consumed in the country were grown in California and weren't available year round. But all that changed in 1994. President Clinton made NAFTA the law today, linking the United States to Canada and Mexico in one large trading block. When NAFTA passed, avocados from Mexico became available everywhere, and folks could enjoy them anytime. Today, even named avocado toast a top trend of the 2010s. Avocado toast. I'm not sure how this happened, but there came a time in the past 10 years when people began to realize that their lives were not complete without it. Thanks to clever campaigns, new diet trends, and an abundant supply, avocado consumption has boomed in the last two decades, growing into a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, 90% of those avocados come from Mexico. However, this has led to major environmental impacts, like deforestation. Rancho Vasquez wants to combat the negative effects of monoculture farming. As an organic orchard, they follow strict guidelines to help protect the land. How have the trees and what you grow 
tried to lessen the impact on the environment. We pick the weeds by hand, are we weedy? Because it's all organic. Yeah. So we don't ever spray any weed killer or anything like that. The deer come and eat all the lower leaves and skirt the trees for us. Ah. And they turn that into natural manure. Now when it comes to picking, avocados require a gentle touch. So we still do it the same high-tech way they did it 100 years ago. Wow. And this is my grandfather's pole. pole right here. Really? Yeah, this is one of the old school ones. So you can pick any of these you want. Okay. So yeah, you just slide it right up till the avocado goes in the basket, and then you pull on the rope. There you go, you're almost there. Pretty difficult, you're doing pretty darn Look, good, you know? A little bit further, and then pull the rope. There you there go, you is. got it. <laughs> good job. <laughs> He's a, he's a catch. <laughs> Ta-da! There you go. My That's first a nice avocado. One too. It's going to take a week to a week and a half right now to ripen and let it get soft. How about going and tasting some? Yes, sir. We picked some about a week or so, so they'd be perfect for you. All right, let's do it. Believe it or not, there are more than 400 varieties of avocados. Rancho Vasquez in Azusa, California sells six. The Fuerte, Hass, Lamb Hass, Reed, Pinkerton, and Gem. Each has a different shape, taste, and growing season. I've never seen such a, like, a round avocado. The ranch's avocados are prized by chefs and customers for their high oil content. That comes from the area's climate, nutrient-rich mountain soil, and secret farming techniques that have been passed down for generations. The higher the oil content, the better the tasting fruit is. Mm -hmm. And then the longer it'll stay green. You can taste and see the difference with their organic hash. It just keeps it oh, really You can literally fresh. see the oil coming out of it. Yeah, so if you want to try just a little chunk, we'll give you a little chunk. Oh, that's great. Next up, the family favorite. Fuerte. Oh, a real, really a different flavor. Absolutely, absolutely. There's almost, it's almost like a saltiness and a creaminess in there. Aside from his wife's guac, Art's favorite way to eat avos is actually with honey. Ooh. It's called avocado dulce, which is avocado candy. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's fantastic. Isn't it great? I would have never thought of that. Guys, this is just amazing. What does it mean for both of you to to be owners of this of this legacy. This is a legacy I do want to leave. My family, my grandkids, Damien, and this will be around for, I'm hoping and praying, for at least another 100 years, you know? And what does it mean for you, Damien? Oh, it's like he said, just a place where history can keep going. Because the trees were here before us, and they're gonna be here after us, so we're just kinda stewards of the land in the meantime. Let's share a little of this guacamole. Yes, sir. Yep. Let the chips fall where they may, as long as they've got guacamole on them.
Avila's El Ranchito is a Southern California staple that's been in business for more than half a century. They've got 13 locations and counting of this family-run chain, but no two restaurants are exactly the same. Every Avila's owner puts their own spin on the family's traditional Mexican recipes. But here at the Seal Beach Outpost, they claim to have the best guacamole. So I've come to learn their secrets. It's time to guac and roll. Hey there, wow, got a lot of folks here. The aunts, uncles, siblings, and cousins behind Avila's El Ranchito really treat their guests like family. This location is run by Elise Avila Smith, a third generation restaurateur. She credits the family's success to her grandma Margarita's hospitality. You know, she just focused on really what we focus on good, fresh food. Salvador and Margarita, or Mama Avila, immigrated from Mexico to the U.S. in 1958. How did they get into the restaurant business? My father had an opportunity to buy a restaurant and talked to my mother and decided, you know, this is a great opportunity. Salvador using his life savings to purchase the old restaurant property in Huntington Park. He turned to his six kids, including Elise's dad, Victor, for support. We would go after school and help him do whatever needed to be done. And my father was pretty much during the day taking care of the whole restaurant, and my mother was in the kitchen. So she was in the only one in the kitchen. And then, Grandpa Polder was well, washing yeah. dishes. Mama's traditional recipes have been passed down through many generations. They've come from way, way back in Mexico. When it first opened in 1966, Avila's was the only Mexican restaurant in the mostly white neighborhood. Many customers had no interest in Mama's traditional dishes, so she developed a strategy to draw people in. It seemed like natural for my mother to offer the people whatever they wanted, so mm. it was more like a home. If they didn't have it on the menu, then my mother would go in the kitchen and make it anyway. Over the next three decades, the Avila siblings opened six new restaurants in Southern California. This expansion wasn't a coincidence. Americans at the same time were falling in love with Mexican food. In the early 80s, there were an estimated 2,500 Mexican restaurants in the U.S. Today, there are more than 60,000. I was busting tables here as a child. <laughs> Elise witnessed that growth as a kid, watching her dad expand the family business. So I grew up doing homework in a booth. On top of that, I grew up with my grandparents living one street over from me. So I grew up cooking with her for years and years. After college, Elise tried working in other fields, but she was always drawn back to the restaurants. I'd be working by day, you know, I worked for a magazine. And then my brother opened his first restaurant and I ended up serving tables at night. So no matter what I did, I kept ending up back in this business and I loved it. I realized that this was my passion, it's in my blood. How do you qualify to open up a, an Avila? Well, it's process, let me tell you. <laughs> Is it really? I had to work every position in the restaurant. So I washed dishes, I worked in the kitchen for a few years, but I've done it all. After proving herself for a decade, Elise opened her own Avila's in 2015. When I first opened my restaurant, I worked for several months from about six in the morning till midnight. And finally, I remember my dad and my brother came in for an intervention and said, you need to go home. You gotta sleep. <laughs> you gotta sleep. So I went home and they ran my restaurant for the night. And I knew with my dad and my brother here, there was nothing to worry about. Mm -hmm. Every Avila's restaurant is unique, reflecting the family member who owns it and the location. They have different decor and specialty menu items. Elise puts her own spin on the brand by offering an extensive tequila cocktail menu. Dad, I'm gonna make you a drink right now. Make it strong. <laughs> Salud, mija. But there are several dishes you're gonna find at every location. Avocados are crucial to many of the family recipes, including the signature guacamole and their beloved chicken soup. Tell me about Mama Avila's soup. That soup that feels like home to me, but it is a chicken breast and rice soup. We make it from scratch every morning, including the broth. We put fresh avocado, cilantro, onion, and tomato in it. And people go, and the first thing they do when they get off the plane is go to have some chicken soup. You mentioned avocado goes into the soup. Tell me about the importance of avocado. It's part of our culture. Bottom line is nobody wants to eat Mexican food without avocado and some guacamole. <laughs> so I'm curious, first you, Victor, what's the secret to a good guacamole? You have to make it, you know, almost really as on a daily basis, almost an hourly basis. 
It needs to be fresh. It needs to be well seasoned. And a little bit of love. I like to think I make a good guac, but I, <laughs> I'm sure I can learn from the best. So how about showing me how you guys do guac? Before making some guac, I enjoyed a cucumber margarita and got a taste of Mama's famous soup. That's great. I would never think about avocado in chicken soup. Oh my God. I can't take credit for that one, Al. That's all grandma. <laughs> all right, you ready to make some guacamole? You bet. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna dump some fresh garlic in here. Okay. This is a traditional mocha hete. From there, you're gonna sprinkle a little bit of salt Just on top. Just a little Just bit a of little salt. Just a little bit of love. And then you're gonna use the top to go ahead and grind it in there. A mocha hete, a Mexican mortar and pestle, is made from volcanic rock. And it's the family secret to great guac. The rough surfaces help crush the ingredients, releasing their natural oils better than chopping them up with a knife. And we're gonna get in some fresh avocado. All right. And then you go ahead and mix that together. And I gotta be gentle with the oh, avocado soft. With, with some be love. Gentle, gentle. In go diced onions, lots of cilantro, and a good squeeze of lime juice. Keep on mixing there, and you got yourself some good, fresh guacamole. I'm gonna dig in here with you too, Al. Mm. Oh, yeah. You make good guacamole, Al. <laughs> I've learned from the best. Elise, to be part of something like this, what, what does it mean? Honestly, I feel compelled to keep these beautiful recipes that are from, gosh, my great-great-grandparents running so that everyone that comes to our restaurant is able to taste them and to sit at our table and feel like family and just be a part of ours. Cheers. How does a ceviche bar a little different from a, a sushi bar? It's like a sushi bar, but more Mexican. Uh-huh. <laughs> this lively food court is home to several family-owned hidden gems. In fact, here you'll find Holbush, a modern eatery renowned for its sustainable seafood. The chef behind this vibrant menu pairs flavors from his childhood in Mexico with the freshest of California fare. Gilberto Satina never thought he would dedicate his life to cooking but his summers spent on the Yucatan Peninsula would later inspire a bold move. Since I was a teenager, growing up in a coastal region, I would go diving with my cousins. We would dive down for octopus, uh, we'd get lobsters, we'd get sea snails, and then he would take that back and cook it. And that was one of the first times that I felt a direct connection to food because even back then, there was a disconnect, you right. know? Food came from the supermarket. And it was the first time I saw something that was like directly from the sea and you can cook it and eat it right away. So that kind of blew my mind. Gilberto immigrated to the U.S. when he was five years old. His father, Gilberto Sr., a former civil engineer, worked various restaurant jobs to support the family. How did your family transition from that kind of grassroots sort of food service to right. a real formal restaurant? It, it really was through the help of the nonprofit that, you know, operates Mercado La Paloma. This bustling market 
is run by Esperanza, or HOPE, a nonprofit dedicated to revitalizing South Los Angeles and helping first-time business owners. They gave us small business training, basic you know, restaurant health department training. They co-signed loans so my dad could purchase the equipment. It was my dad's dream to have a restaurant that represented our Mexican food, the food of the Yucatan, which is very distinct from other regions of Mexico. In 2001, Gilberto Sr. opened the family's first restaurant, Chichen Itza. The menu featuring traditional dishes like conchinita pibil, salbutes, and panuchos. Lo empezamos la mamá de Gilberto y yo, o sea, mi esposa y yo. En, al principio éramos dos personas nada más. They needed help. But Gilberto was reluctant to join the family business. I didn't want to cook. I didn't want to be in the kitchen because I, I grew up in a household where we always, you know, cooking was always used to make ends meet, like a lot of, you know, immigrant families. So when we opened the restaurant and my dad asked me to come along and help him out for six months, I was front of the house. Slowly I just discovered the cooking and that I enjoyed it and, you know, started learning from my dad. Even without formal training, Gilberto quickly learning the ropes, becoming a savvy businessman. Ten years in, Chichen Itza was thriving with dozens of employees. They even released a cookbook. Con el paso de los años, finalmente empezó a sentir la misma pasión que yo tenía por el negocio. After taking over at Chichen Itza, Gilberto was ready for a new challenge, one inspired by those summer boat trips in Mexico. Where does the name Holbosch come from? So Holbosch is a place. It's an island off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. He wanted to bring tropical, fresh from the sea vibes, along with an elevated experience, to diners in South Los Angeles. When Holbosch opened in the same market, it changed many perceptions of what Mexican food could be. We go outside of the realm of Yucatan and we do food from all different coastal regions of Mexico. Gilberto's fusion dishes allow the freshest fish to shine. Menu staples include seasonal ceviches and an octopus taco. His innovative cooking has wowed locals and critics alike. How does it feel to be nominated for a James Beard Award for this? Mm. After the shock, I think the first thing that I felt was extreme pride in my team. To a certain level, I guess it feels a little bit like validation because we're doing something slightly outside of the box. You look across Mexican cuisine, and, and one of the commonalities is the avocado. Why does the avocado work so well across cuisines in Mexico, but especially your cuisine? The pairing of avocado goes extremely well with raw seafood preparations like ceviches and cocteles, and they're very bright, light, and acidic. I think avocado is the perfect complement because it gives it a little bit, you know, creamy richness. That delicate balance is best represented in the shrimp and scallop aguachiles. And I couldn't wait to try making it. So aguachile is super simple. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take, we're gonna make a marinade that's gonna cook or denature our scallops, right? So we're just gonna take some, some cilantro. Uh -huh. Next up, the chili. Serrano peppers bring the heat. Persian cucumbers cool it down. There's a pinch of salt, ice to prevent oxidation, and a squeeze of lime juice. Then the marinade blends for just about a minute. Now, we're just gonna take a bowl. Go ahead and put a couple of uh, spoonfuls of these beautiful Baja California Bay scallops. Ooh, look at those. Now, we're gonna pour the marinade and hold on to the spoon for stirring. Perfect, that's about right. We wanna let that marinate for at least five minutes. Gilberto takes his agua chile to the next level with an avocado rose. After pitting and peeling, it was time to get slicing. Your knife can be straight because your avocado is at an angle and we're pull oh. cutting. You're just gonna do this, Al. Look. Okay. The key to a great rose, super thin slices. We're hiring, you know. <laughs> okay. Now the next step, hands, right? This, we're gonna do this, this motion. We're gonna fan out the okay. avocado, okay. right? So, can you see that? Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Looking good there. I think that's uh, good enough to roll. You're gonna start at the tip right here, okay. and you just roll this one like that. You see how that's 
forming a really big flower? Yes. This is a pretty advanced skill, but yeah. I think it's one worth practicing. Oh, yeah. And it's a nice party trick, you know? Sure. Impress your friends. Yeah. So, which one should we use? I <laughs> think that one. Made by the professional. Time to plate it up. That's looking beautiful. You're a lot neater doing this than I am. I'll yeah. take like a spoonful of them and just yeah. drop it on there and then arrange them on the plate. Ah, pro tip. And of course, the finishing touches. Wow. This is our scallop agua chile. And I help make it. Can something this pretty taste as good as it looks? Mm, that looks like a good bite. Mm. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. But yet so simple. Thank you, sir. Al, it was a pleasure. Fantastic. The Haas avocado may have started out as a lucky surprise, but for decades, its popularity has been no accident. The Mexican-American culinary traditions passed down through the years have made this delicious and nutritious fruit a staple for so many of us across the country. And thanks to generations of enterprising families, this bumpy green fruit is going to have a very long shelf life. Well, hi there, guys. Welcome to The Boost. We are so happy that you're with us. Today, we've got some of our favorite social media follows for you. People sharing their talents online who inspire us, they make us laugh, and you know what? They're just playing cool. So first up, the adorable boy who went viral for a morning routine that is showing grown-ups and kids the best way to start their day. And lucky for us, he joined us right here in Studio 1A. Six-year-old Ion Jump wakes up before his siblings. You know why? <laughs> he wants to enjoy his lemon and honey tea. He wants to read his chapter book. His mom just posted a video. It happens all the time. That video went viral, got nearly 3 million views and counting. Oh, my gosh. One comment said he looks like he's got himself a healthy 401k. <laughs> Another asking, can he be my life coach? Well, yes, he can, because Ion is here along with his parents, Alyssa and Alpha. Hi, good guys. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Ion. How are you? I'm good. You are? Now, tell us about your morning routine. Why do you like to take some time to calm down, read, and have your tea? Well, I like to enjoy myself because sometimes when I wake up, and I go to school, I don't have enough time. So that's why I, my mom said that if I finish my morning routine quickly, then I can do a quiet activity. Well, that is so wise, not only of your mommy, but for yes. you to take that advice. I know you have, uh, you got a brother and sister at mm -hmm. home, so it's probably loud once they get up. So you need a little time to yourself. Quiet time. What do you do during your quiet time? What does it feel like? When, when I have my quiet time, I can read a book, drink my tea, or I can play with a toy or any other quiet activity. Okay, okay, talk to them. We're in love you, I am, by the way. If my kids what's are watching, here. you're grounded um, forever. Okay, I mean, Alyssa and yeah. Alpha, yeah. this extraordinary child. Yes. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Extraordinary parents uh -huh. as well. Thank How did you. you do this? We would like a step-by-step -step guide. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do not have a step-by-step -step guide. But, you know, we started um, with reading to Ion really early. Mm -hmm. Really from the womb, you know. Mm -hmm. We've been reading to him, and we it was uh, an act something that we did at night. Every night we read to him. Um, and so he's just grown to have a love for reading. You know, he looks forward to getting books as a gift. Mm -hmm. He's asking for different books. We introduce him to um, different types of stories. And... As far as the tea, that's really dad. Dad drinks yeah. tea. <laughs> so I grew so. up on, uh, I come from a Caribbean household, so I grew up on tea um, every day. And of course, Ion sees me, you know, drinking my tea in the morning. So one day we just introduced tea. Um, he has his own tea. It's special. It's lemon, honey, and water. Uh -huh. It's not, you know, regular tea. So he has his special tea. Well, what's interesting about this is a lot of our kids do like to read, but we can't get them to be calm yes. like this in the morning. <laughs> I think liking this is his nature, you think though. Are you just a calm kind of kid? 
Yes. You are? For the most part, yeah. Because I mean, he's still a kid. He's still a kid. <laughs> right. But I remember back when we first met Ion, mm -hmm. and he was talking about affirmations. Yeah. And that was something that caught fire. What were the three affirmations he said? You I'm said. smart. I am blessed. I can do anything. You are smart. <laughs> you are blessed. You can do anything. Do, was this something that you just sort of repeated to yes. him? Yes. And then did you actually see it? Manifesting. Yes, him. yes. I taught it to him when he was two. Um, I just yeah. wanted to. Oh, is that it playing? That's him. <laughs> we hear you. Um, yeah. I just wanted him to have something so that he could feel confident and motivated. You know, as he got older. And then the video that you are talking about is when he was three. We were walking to school and he yes. just started saying it by himself. By himself. Yeah. So I just recorded it and you know I posted it. Um, but he says it. I hear him saying it to himself. I don't have to prompt him anymore. If he's having a difficult time, he'll be like, I can do this. I can do anything. <laughs> By the way, so you wrote a children's working. book, didn't you? Yes. What's it called? Two books. Yeah. Um, yes. With my sister. The yes. first book is called I Am Smart. I Am Blessed. I Can Do Anything. Yes. And the second book is I Am Amazing. Wow. Well, I yeah. think you guys are amazing because Thank here's... You. He's obviously an extraordinary child, and we yeah, all yeah. know if your parents, it's like they just, they are who they are, right. you know? <laughs> we, right. we can only do so much. Exactly. But I love that you... Get, you trusted him enough mm -hmm. to give him that time to do something that is yes. quite mature. Sometimes yes. I think we underestimate mm -hmm. yes. what our kids can do. And you so have cool. obviously, obviously set high expectations that Ion has met. Yeah. yeah. Ion is just a, you know, he's a very special kid. His name means gift from God, and he's truly oh. just been a gift um, to yeah. us since he's been here. He's just an awesome kid. He's just naturally yes. amazing. Ion, do you ever think about what you want to be when you get bigger, when you grow up? Yes, I want to be a scientist when I grow. And I have my own scientist club at school. You my do? friend Peter's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> really? And why do you want to be a scientist? Because I'm going to make a formula that I can rub on people's heads, and that will make them never die. Until a few months, it will fade away. <laughs> Ion, I believe oh, you. Ion, I you do can too. do anything. I do. Now to a young woman who is wise beyond her years, the junior journalist who has interviewed some of the biggest stars on the planet. Take a look. I'm here with the one and only Lizzo, with superstar actor Michael B. Jordan, with amazing swimmer, Mr. Michael Phelps. By day, Jaslyn Guetta is your average 12-year-old Brooklyn kid. But for the last three years with her social media platforms called Jazzy World TV, Jazzy has gone viral for her girl on the street interviews with the biggest names in music, movies, and sports. I've interviewed Jay-Z, Jay Cole, Shaquille O'Neal, Cardi B, Tom Holland, and much more. So could you explain why persistence is so important? So I told my dad, hey, I want to have a YouTube channel. And he said, you got to figure out something that's outside of the box. I think um, a lot of celebrities tend to talk to Jazzy. Number one, they're not used to a 12-year-old approaching them the way that she does. A lot of people have actually seen Jazzy before. I used to come up with different questions like, what's your favorite color? Or like, what kind of pizza do you like? And I used to ask my sister and my younger brother. Jazzy's interview skills have even caught the attention of us here at Today. Looks like Jazzy's already on the right path to yeah. success. Mm. I blew up because I met Jay-Z. To all the kids that have dreams of being successful like you, what advice could you give them? You got to have ultimate confidence like you do. We're from similar neighborhoods and he's very successful and he just works hard in general and I want to be just like him. I feel very proud of myself for making it this far. Well, I'm just proud of me. I feel like it's very important for kids to also have voices. Let them follow their goals. If they make a couple mistakes, that's fine. It, you have to make mistakes in order to be successful in something that you want to do. Jazzy. 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 Oh my God, you're, Jazzy, you're amazing. Can we just start off with that? Can I ask you, how, how do you get all these celebrities to talk to you? You are dazzling and cute, <laughs> but how do you get them to do that? Well, I can't tell you guys my secret recipe, so I just can't tell you guys that. But all I can say is that I'm at the right place at the right time, and all it takes is dedication, belief in yourself, ultimate confidence, like Jay-Z said, yes. and working hard. That confidence, that confidence blows us away. Yeah. Where do you think it comes from? I think it comes from coming from a big family and, you know, just... Myself, I don't really know where it comes from. I'm just very confident in myself. I just think that I can do anything I put my heart into and I can achieve any goal that I have for myself. Who told you that when you were a kid, that you could do anything? My mom and my dad. And your dad happens to be here with us today. We're yes. so excited that he's here. You're going into seventh grade. Yeah. 
you already have interviewed some of the biggest names in all of our pop culture. What do you want to do? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know what I'm going to do in like 10 years or five years or two years or even tomorrow. I don't even know what I'm going to eat for breakfast. <laughs> but the only thing I know what, the only thing I know is that I really, really, really want to host my own kids' show for kids. Okay. Okay, I think we should turn the tables. Yes. What You're going to ask us some questions? Oh, sure thing. Okay, All right, that's we're ready, right. Jazzy. It's time for Jazzy's, Jazzy's World, World TV. Cool. Okay, we're ready. So, I'm not sure if you had a similar experience, but when I first started my reporting career, many people didn't believe in me. And, you know, many people didn't take me seriously. Yeah. So, and I used that, and I used my belief of my brand and my vision in order to become successful. Mm. So, to all the viewers that have, to all the viewers that have mm -hmm. a similar experience, mm -hmm. what advice can you give them? Mm, great question. You're unbelievable. I'm so blown away by you. I can't believe that you're going to seventh grade. Um, Thank you. I got a lot of rejection when I was going through the ranks and reporting, and I got rejected all the time that I thought rejection was normal. So when I got an interview, it was like a celebration. <laughs> and I think, to me, the best advice is people are going to drop out because they don't like hard things. If you stay in it, there's open road. Because you know why? People can't handle it. So the more you go, the more you keep going, the road is clear ahead and you go, oh my gosh, it's great up here. But you have to get through the other stuff before. You're definitely right. And <laughs> all I gotta say is that when you first start, <laughs> when you first start, many people may not believe in you. Yeah. And that's all right, because as long as you believe in yourself, that, you're confident, and you work hard, you is... can achieve any goal that you have. Just ahead, a music program that has become instrumental in the life of kids. Stay with us. on the boost shining a light on a program right here in New York that's helping level the playing field when it comes to music education and it has the support of some big names in the music world. Sitting in with one of the best in the world. That's Anthony McGill playing along with third graders at PS 315 in Brooklyn. <laughs> you want to try that? McGill usually performs on a much bigger stage as the principal clarinet player for the New York Philharmonic. My name is Anthony McGill. And on the day we caught up with him, he was happy to visit students just starting their musical journey. What's it like for you personally when you get to, to spend some time with these young, budding musicians? <laughs> it's all about the love of music. For me. So to be able to tell these kids that, you know, that fire inside of you is real. It can be lit. It can be lit more and more and more. And you can just go like as far as you want with it. McGill knows firsthand he found his love of playing music as a boy growing up on the south side of Chicago. His older brother took to the flute and he fell in love with the low notes of the clarinet. As someone who grew up playing the violin, uh -huh. I, I, I remember 
not always easy. <laughs> not always easy with like friends. Yeah. Who you're like, oh, I can't, I can't do this. I gotta go to orchestra practice. Yeah. Did exactly. you have some of that or? Oh, always. Yeah. I mean, I wanted to be a track star when I was a kid. So the music thing got in the way of that completely. He became a star and the first black principal musician at the New York Philharmonic. He also works with a nonprofit group called the Harmony Program to help share that love of music. The program hires professional musicians, placing them in underserved communities to teach music to children who use donated instruments. Ann Fitzgibbon is the program's founder and executive director. The goal is bigger than training musicians. The goal is really about helping our children discover their self-confidence. We want children to discover through music their capacities to be successful at whatever they try. 10-year-old Matthew Phillips says he loves the sharing of knowledge involved in learning music. When you learn something for the first time and you actually, like somebody is confused and you get to teach it to them, that just gives you the warmness in your heart. The same warmness as, fin as knowing how to play a piece. 13-year-old Talia Williams says she wants to be a doctor someday, but she's already getting self-confidence from challenging herself through music. I feel very proud because I worked so hard on that piece and I finally got it stuck in my head and I did so good on it. And then I feel happy that I got to get to play it with other people and share the piece. The Harmony Program, filling the air with music and giving these students the determination and strength that comes along with playing it. Being able to learn more and express more and be more creative and have interest in going to school and continuing in their, along their path, that's really important to connect those dots. That is not something that's extracurricular. It should be a part of every curriculum. This next man interviews kids around New York City on any number of topics, spreading joy and also learning a thing or two along the way. Let's take a look. I would have never thought that something as simple as outdoor play could be so beneficial emotionally and socially. It helps the child, but it also helps the parent. 10 years ago, Ginny Yurich was a mother of three young kids struggling to find ways to fill the day. What was daily life like for you? I was drowning, I was really drowning, I'm very discouraged and just having a hard time making it through the day to day. What were some of the activities you would do at the time to, to keep them occupied? So we scheduled a lot of things like library programs and the music class and swim and those things were very hard to juggle. It was a lot of effort for maybe not so much output. That was until one day a mom friend of Ginny's invited her to the park for a play date. She had read um, from this educator from the 1800s who actually said kids should be outside for four to six hours whenever the weather is tolerable. And I thought, well, that's absurd. But I went along with my friend and it was sort of the first day that I had a good day as a mom. And it's like mother nature sort of stepped in to occupy the kids. I left feeling refreshed and rejuvenated, and that one day changed the whole course of our life. As her kids spent more time outside each day, the Michigan mom started noticing how outdoor play was positively impacting their lives. They're more coordinated all of a sudden, and they're happier, and they're thriving. They're jumping off of stumps. They're chasing squirrels. They're doing all these things that seem frivolous, but really have so much value for their whole child development. I don't know why I'm getting emotional hearing you talking about this, but there's something to be said about allowing kids to just find pure joy, doing what their brain wants to do. And I know for a fact my son Calvin loves to jump off of stumps. And it's a gift, I think, to know that those things are worthy. In 2013, she started writing about her family's outdoor experiences and set a challenge for themselves for one year, calling it 1,000 Hours Outside. That sounds like a lot of time. How did you come up with that? Why didn't we start with 100 or 200? The prevailing research um, is hitting around three hours of outdoor play. It's sort of uh, a really beneficial number to shoot for. And I started the website when I realized that average screen time is about 1,200 hours a year. But kids are only outside for four to seven minutes a day. And so over the course of a year, I am aiming to fill our life you know, with these 1,000 hours of nature time. And some families do more and some families shoot for less, but the point is being intentional about it. 
Today, Ginny now has five kids in tow, and her 1,000 Hours Outside community has grown into a worldwide movement with more than 250,000 posts from families sharing their outdoor adventures on social media. Have you noticed uh, your, your community growing because of the pandemic? People are sick of being inside? I think so, and I also think that there's not much else to do. All of a sudden, everything got canceled. Then we realize that nature offers so much for us. I think that that has changed a lot of people's lives. I'm looking at your background, and this this is my background. Yeah, love it. <laughs> so how do I do this in New York City? This is actually the special part of it. It looks different for every family. Well, no matter how simple it seems, kids are really engaged with sidewalk chalk and a jump rope. I can't wait till Calvin gets home from school today because it's a beautiful day here. Go outside! Yeah, let's go outside! Woohoo! We'll do another hour outside today. 10 hours. 10 hours today? Yeah, please, Mom. We have a lot more ahead, including our day taking over at a kid's summer camp. That's after the break. Summer break has arrived across much of the country, and that means kids are heading to summer camp. So guess what? Craig, Al, Carson, and I visited Asphalt Green right here in New York, where we became camp counselors for a day. Take a look. a camp counselor at a summer camp and I loved every second of it. I think I'm gonna be a good camp counselor because I understand kids, because I'm a big kid. I wouldn't say that I'm going to be the best camp counselor. In fact, I'm probably going to be the most mediocre, but I'm gonna have the most fun. It's not about being the best, it's about making sure you're doing it for the kids. That said, I'm the best, because I'm the loudest. All right, let's get started! So when I was in high school, uh -huh, I played basketball and I used to dream about it. Do you like basketball? How much? So much! How much? So much! I want my kids to be loud. I want them to be the loudest at camp because of course the kids at Camp Hoda are gonna have the most fun. Basketball! Oh, you guys know how to dribble? You guys got skills! Nice! Yes! 
bounce off the backboard. Game on, baby. All the way. Dribble, dribble, pass it down. Oh, the blue team stole it. Uh-oh, uh-oh, it's a race to the basket. Red team's got it. No pushing. Okay, you got to bounce it. He's going up for it. Oh. Okay, let him shoot. Yeah. The blue team has one and the red team has one. And this is where the game is ending, and I'll tell you why. What's the most important part? Raise your hand if you've ever done the potato sack race. And I'm going to demonstrate. We just hop. And we hop. And whoever hops the fastest to the end wins. Get in your sacks. Campers, are you ready for the potato sack race? On your mark, get set. Let's see. Oh, ooh, we lost two. Oh, we lost three. And you're the winner. You're the winner. And the lesson that I'm, I'm really going to try and, and leave them with is winning is easy. Losing's hard. No participation trophies here, kids. You can't go easy on the kids. You're going to toughen them up. But you pick a team. Pick a team. Oh, it's going to be like this. OK. If I have my way, you're going to lose a lot. Nothing builds up a child like tearing them down. Tug of war. Ugh. Oh, these kids are strong. Come on, campers. Ah! Come on. Pull. Ah! Welcome to Science Lab. Give yourself a round of applause. Come on, kids. I love science. Science was my favorite subject in school because it was so fun. We're going to make elephant toothpaste. Safety first, right kids? Do you have goggles? Do we have goggles? Step one, we're going to take our hydrogen peroxide and we're going to pour it in this cylinder here. We're going to make our elephant toothpaste blue today. Should I put more in? You want more blue? Yeah. Come on, I can't hear you. Yeah. All right, more blue. Let's shake it up. Ooh, look guys. Should I drink? Take a sip? No. no. This is the yeast. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Three, yeah. two, one. one. In three, two, one, pour it, and yeah! It's that much better when it's fun to learn. I think kids want to make learning fun. You all look a little hot. Are you ready to get cooled off? Yeah! All right. Well, we're going to do a little relay race. I like water slide races because you get to run with reckless abandon and you get to get wet. And, and it's the one time where the adults aren't saying, stop running. No, it's run, get wet. All right, and they're in the slip and slide. They're running through. Oh, he's sliding. She's showing incredible grit. She went down, but she's back up. Yes, and through. Woo, yeah. You guys were fantastic. Give yourselves a hand. Who wants to go on the big slip and slide? This is just like being at my house. Nobody listens. Hey, guys. Water slides open. Come on. I hope that my campers leave camp with a, a sense of togetherness. Because you know you've done your job. If the kids wake up tomorrow and go, man, I can't wait to get back to camp. This is like a dream time for kids. Summer camp's where it's at, baby. Now, that was some good old-fashioned fun in the sun. We got another feel-good video for you right after the break.
the boost, we've got that daily morning boost you do not want to miss. Take a look. The Philadelphia Area. Zoo officially introduced a pair of adorable baby sloth bear cubs to the world earlier this week. So live from Philly, we have those cubs Aww. alongside oh, the zoo's director, uh, Mission uh, Integration, Danny Hogan is with us. Okay, we're going to ooh and awe, Danny, for a second uh, <laughs> first. But tell us about sloth bears. I think for a lot of us, this is the first time we'd ever heard that term. Sloth bears are an incredible species. They're found in some Southeast Asian countries like India and Sri Lanka, and you can see just how cute they are. They are not related to sloths, but they have those long, sharp, curved claws that sloths also have. These guys will use those for digging and climbing. They are insect eaters, so they can eat up to 40,000 insects in a day, but they also wow. eat things like fruits and roots. And here you can see they're enjoying a special treat, some peanut butter. You said 40,000 insects wow. a yes. day. That's a wow. So what's a day like yeah. for them? Lay it out. What's their typical day like? So like so many of us, they're still figuring it out. These huh. babies are brand new, especially to this mm. habitat. And mom is still getting used to letting them explore and roam a little further from her every day. So they are still learning exactly what their day to day is going to look like. But like most babies, they do sleep a lot mm. and they're always on the hunt for food and something new to play with. What a fun show, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. We always love sharing some of our favorite follows with you. We will see you next time right here on Today All Day. Well, hello there. Thanks for joining me for another fun-filled edition of Popstar Plus. You know what? It is graduation season, and there is really nothing quite like reflecting back on your high school years. Whether those memories make you smile or cringe, let's face it, what an iconic time in our lives and in history. So why not revisit it? From Greece to Clueless, we invite you to take a little trip down memory lane with us on this episode as we look back on the films that remind us of our teen years. We're gonna kick things off with a celebration of the film Grease. It's been, if you can believe it, 45 years since its release. And Danny and Sandy's summer romance still resonates with people of all ages. Back in 1998, 20 years after Grease first hit theaters, it was re-released and the stars, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, stopped by to celebrate. Have a look. I think people love the difference between the greasers and the jocks. And they like to differentiate those two groups. Right. I think that, that the 50s was the, the birth of rock and roll, and we love that. We love the iconic figures, Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, Elvis Presley, and uh, the dancing and the music, you know, to boot. You know, so it's, it's interpretive. Everyone may have a different reason why they like Grease, but those were some of the reasons I liked it. You know, I'm just a fool who's willing to sit around wait for you but baby can't you see there's nothing else for me to do i'm hopelessly devoted to you it's kind of romantic and seemingly innocent compared to how we live now. I think they love the costumes. Like, you look so cute in that, by the way. Yeah, and the 50s look is so sweet. And I think men and women love to dress up in the leather jackets and the poodle skirts. And it's a great story. Boy meets girl, loses girl, gets her back, you know. Some loving had me a blast. Some loving happened so fast. I met a girl crazy for me. A boy, cute as can be. Summer days drifting away to another summer night. were very, very heady times for both of you in terms of your careers. John, take us back to sort of what was happening to you back then. Sure. Well, um, let's see. Um, well, Olivia was at the top of her career. I mean, you know, she and Barbara Streisand were probably the biggest 
singers in the world. And I was uh, coming up through, uh, you know, the ranks Cotter, and I had done a couple of uh, songs that were top ten hits, and I'd filmed uh, Saturday Night Fever. Remind me of your top ten songs. Letter In was another one, and uh, I mean, it was one of them. And then, uh, uh, and Eric, um, I forgot the, 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 the other one. <laughs> sing, sing a little of Letter uh, uh, How letter did that go? Uh, <laughs> no, because I can't remember it. I, I know I will I'm when you sing it. today. Hey, hey, something she said has stuck in my head and I can't get away. Gonna let her in. I remember Gonna that. Yeah, okay, nice well, song. there you go. God, so, people probably don't even remember that you recorded Well, actually, that. what happened was that Robert Sigwood had seen that in Time magazine, that I was uh, on this hit series and that had this song. And then I was the one who kept on pushing Olivia because I said there's no one else in the world to play Sandy than Olivia Newton-John. So Olivia reluctantly did a screen test. You had done Saturday Night Fever, but Saturday you Fever. had not done much acting? Not a lot. I made a musical several years before that that was pretty bad, and so that's why I was so <laughs> reluctant about making another one, unless it was really right, or I felt that I'd be good in it. And also, I was 29, and I was going to have to play like 17, and wanted to make sure that, you know, John and I, that I looked from the right age next to him on screen. So I asked, could I please do a screen test, and then if I don't like it, I'm out. So you see, I had so, the luxury of, of, I had done the Broadway show, I had done the Road Company of Greece, so I had the luxury of knowing that the play worked and that the movie would work just as well. She didn't. So I had the confidence in her and the piece. Both, you see. Let's talk about what you all, I mean, a lot has happened to each of you mm -hmm. in the last 20 years, kind of ups and downs and a lot of different things personally and professionally. Um, Olivia, you, you had some health problems, which I know from personal experience is a very life-altering thing. Um, how are you feeling? How are you doing? I'm great, thank you. It's, uh, I had breast cancer six, year, six years in May, so I'm, I'm great. Thank you. Doing very well. Do you still feel like you live with that? Uh, someone described it as a whale in your living room. No, I don't. No. 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 The whales are in the ocean outside my window. <laughs> I feel very positive. I wake up every day and um, just thank the day. And that's all I think we ever can do because we don't know what's around the corner. But I really don't think of it as anything coming back. For me, it's gone, and that's the way I choose to think. And I feel you very still good. Have her. Yeah. <laughs> you now you. Yes. Have uh, been on quite a roll. Oh my goodness. Do you feel pretty blessed lately? I do. I do. I mean, it's it's an extraordinary thing, you know, and uh, I, uh, I I I'm more prepared to pre appreciate everything that's happened to me uh, recently. You have been working fast and furiously. I mean, movie after movie after movie after having a uh, dry spell. Is that safe to say sure. for especially for a bit of time? Especially in the quality of projects, you know, that's really what I've appreciated mostly in the last four years is the the quality has gone up to the upper echelon of, uh, of projects. Yeah. Is it fun to see the baby boomers who grew up with Greece now yeah. sharing it with their kids? Absolutely. I know how exciting that is to see every generation love, uh, love Greece. It's neat. You better shape up. Only the beginning. What icons, what a iconic film. So iconic, in fact, that inspired the musical series, more recently, Grease, Rise of the Pink Ladies. That just came out last month. If you don't know about it, that's set four years before the original film, and it follows the group of high school misfits who would go on to form the Pink Ladies. That cast visited us recently in Studio 1A and told Hoda and Jenna all about it. We've been so looking forward to this. The story takes place four years before the original blockbuster film, so let's take a sneak peek. Everyone already thinks we're such bad girls. We're not girls, we're ladies. <laughs> the pink ladies.
fine. I'll consider it on a trial basis. <laughs> so, Jane, you think a pink lady can become president? I spent so much time just trying to prove that I'm the good guy and Buddy's the bad guy. But I'm realizing that maybe sometimes you gotta be bad to do good. Yeah. Gotta be bad to do good. Four of the stars are with us now. Marissa Davila, Cheyenne Isabel Wells, Ari. No Tartamasa. Thank no you, Tartamasa! <laughs> and Trishu. Welcome, <laughs> Ladies, first of all, this is amazing. I'm so happy that you're all here with us today. This has been a life changer. Certain things in life happen and your life changes. Will you explain like how this has changed the course of your life? I mean, it already has. Yeah. We've just gone through the ringer yeah. of all of the, the, the filming process and the press process. It's like no other. I don't, I don't think anyone could have prepared us for something like this, but I'm just really glad that I have them to do it with. <laughs> How did you, how does a role like this come about? I mean, all of you have been musical theater kids right. since you were very young, have probably given your heart and soul yeah. to this. But how do you get a call like this? Like, yeah. how did you even get the audition? Yeah. Uh, I got an, I got a random email yeah. in the audition with a couple emails that day. Okay. Yes. Yeah, just random email. Random, yeah. random email. Yeah. Friendly yeah. agents. Oh. Yeah. Friendly. <laughs> what is this? I was actually working an immersive um, theater show in downtown LA, and one of our cast members was like, "Hey, there's this open call. Everybody should submit." So I reached out to my and reps and like, "Hey, can we can we submit to this?" An yeah. open call. Was yeah. yeah. So yeah. out of how many how many people were were auditioning? Do you know? Uh, hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. More. Okay, probably a lot. so whole country. <laughs> this is a call you don't forget. When you get the call that you have been selected, it has to be mind-blowing. Ari, what was it like for you? Well, for, they, they tried to trick us. They really they did. To they call. told us that it was another audition. We had already done our screen test. We all were, like, waiting for, to hear something, and they're like, we have to bring you back on. Um, and we were in the waiting I was in the waiting room just, like, kind of like, what are we doing? Like, we have <laughs> There's no more what scenes. Like, what is there? Right, right. And then they surprised us, and it was the all the, the everyone from exactly. Paramount, the execs, oh. and the Oh, screen, my the gosh. Team. That must have been a, like, you, it must have felt like a life-changing yeah. day. Oh, yeah. Trisha, I heard that you taped your parents when this happened. Do we have a little bit of this? I know they're here. Let's look. <laughs> so you would just hold him? Okay, so... Yeah, I oh. talk about life changing. I definitely felt like my life was about to change and this would never happen again. And I wanted to capture that moment, even though they don't like being on camera. So well, sorry, they sorry, don't like to I be on camera, all. but they're here. So <laughs> can we just say hi? And we have, with, uh, with, they're your people. Uh, uh, who else do we have? Who else is here? Let's see. Who, who else, else is with us? Span out a little, guys. <laughs> uh, some of your family oh my friends. Gosh. This is such. A, now, did you guys all see Grease One? Oh yeah, okay. yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Did, what, wasn't it like the type of thing that you watched over and over and over yeah, again? Over and over yeah. and over so, again. does anybody remember their favorite part or favorite line? Oh, oh, I love when the pink ladies are walking in a school and yeah, they're like, totally. "We're gonna rule the school." <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, school. What else do any of y'all oh have gosh. memorable? Men are rats. Men are fleas on rats. Yeah. Yeah. Worse than fleas on rats. Yeah. Names on fleas on rats. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the, don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite. Are you all just friends? I can tell. Were yeah. you friends from oh. the beginning? Oh, yeah. Well, we didn't know each other before no. this. Yeah, we but... actually met during a fire alarm at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes. Yes. And then it, like, it seems like chemistry hit right yes. away. It so, did. Like, I never got yeah. to go to Whistler a lot. Yeah. Well, well, just well, one time. Just one time. Just one time. Yeah. Well, one time. One time. Yeah. I promise I was there, too. One time. We're going to yes. do another All show. Right. Well, that's a great show. and looks like a lot of fun. All right, don't go anywhere because we're just getting started. When we come back, we're going to get Pretty in Pink with Molly Ringwald.
Welcome back to Pop Star Plus. In 1986, the film Pretty in Pink came out. It chronicled the lives of a group of high school kids growing up in the 80s, much like myself. And breakout star Molly Ringwald gave a stellar performance as Andy Walsh, a senior and outcast who navigates complications of dating and friendships and all the things. And in another interview from our vault, we have Molly here discussing her role in the movie when she visited today. And this is just after the film's release. Let's watch. One of the fondest or one of the most painful memories we may have from my high school years is from the senior prom. Pretty in Pink, a new movie out this week, is about that special time about relationships between two very different classes of students, the rich kids and the not-so-rich kids. Molly Ringwald stars in the movie, and her celebrity this month takes her beyond the screen to the pages of Life magazine. Well, she joins us here this morning to talk about her movie and her career, which is going very, very well. You um, have, have said that this is going to be your last high school movie? How come? Well, because it's my third one, and I think if I go on, I'm just going to be repeating myself. And I'm, I've turned 18 about a week ago, and I'm going to graduate this year. And I just think I have to move on. I mean, I don't mean, I don't mean not playing a teenager, just not something that has to do with high school and high school life. You're graduating from high school? Yeah. How have you managed to, to fit high school in with with all of your movies <laughs> and finish at the age of 18 when you're supposed to finish? Well, it's difficult, you know, because I'm leading, I guess, in a sense, two different lives, but um, it just has to be done. You know, I go to school when I'm not working. I have a tutor when I'm, when I am working, and so I just manage to do it somehow. Is it um, like a regular high school I would go to? You know, do you have lockers and, and, and do you go to the senior prom and, and do you <laughs> do all the regular stuff or is it very different? It's, it's different, the school that I go to, because it's a private school. Um, and uh, it's, it's not a public school, it's, it's a little different. It's actually, it's a French school. So there's a lot of, and there's a lot of different people from a lot of different places like, you know, India and, you know, Kuwait or, you know, Korea and everything. So it's, I guess it's a little different from most schools. Yeah. But I'm not really there that much. In your <laughs> movies, you've, all, you've, you've always done the high school like I went to, mm -hmm. which presumably is very much like the, the, uh, the high school you are appearing in in Pretty in Pink. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at a clip from Pretty in Pink. So, you're in love? Yeah, I think I am. Well, uh, who is this guy? His name's Blaine, and he's a senior. He's so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, he's a Richie. Uh, a what -y? A Richie. <laughs> it's kind of stupid. It's just his family has a lot of money. Oh, well, is that a problem? I don't know, it's just weird. You know, his friends have a lot of money, and he has a lot of money. Drives a BMW. <laughs> Just, I, I don't know. I'm not really sure if they're going to accept me. Well, what does that mean? I mean, you like him, he likes you. Uh, what his friends think shouldn't make any difference. Yeah, but it's not just his friends. It's my friends, too. It's everybody. I'm just not real secure about it. Well, so take the heat. I mean, you like him, he likes you. Uh, it's worth it. Is it? Well, isn't it? You're right. I'm just overreacting, aren't I? Well, not necessarily. I mean, a good kiss can scramble anybody's <laughs> brain. <laughs> <laughs> Great look. Molly Ringwald, you were listening to the Oprah Winfrey interview that Jean Shalit did. Mm -hmm. She was talking about how Steven Spielberg hires her. She does a talk show host, and then, and then the next thing wants her to do a scene tomorrow where she's got to cry. And not being a trained actress, how do you do that? Uh -huh. How do you do that? <laughs> Um, well, the first movie I guess I had to do that in was Tempest with Paul Mazursky, and he never came up to me and said, okay, you're going to have to cry. It was just, I knew it, I read the script, and I knew I was going to have to do it, and so I just did it, you know, and it was, he's kind of a, the kind of director where he, um, he sort of made me cry. He got me so nervous and, you know, keyed up that he just, it would just happen. I didn't really think about it. I, you know, I, I suppose if I would have thought about it, I would have, you know, got as nervous as she did. But now it's just, you know, it's, it's a very easy thing for me to do now. It, never mind that you're very young. You do have uh, a long list of, of credits. What does an actress with a long list of credits think, looking at another actress who's never made a movie before in her life and gets an Academy Award nomination like she did? Um, I think it's wonderful, you know, that she got an Academy yeah. Award nomination. I mean, it's certainly, it's flattering. You know, I really personally don't think that I've done anything yet that deserves, you know, an Academy Award nomination. That's just what I think. You're but, waiting for a role? Yeah, I, I really haven't done the role that I think is, you know, absolutely perfect yet. But, you know, it, there's a lot of time still. Yes, <laughs> thank you for recognizing that. There is a lot of time, Molly, Molly Ringwald.
when you get it, I hope to see you back here. Thank you. Incredible to think how far Molly Ringwald has come from those days. That was fun to check out that interview from The Vault. After the break, we are catching up with the star of the classic film Clueless, Alicia Silverstone. Stay with us. Thanks for sticking with us here on Pop Start Plus. We've been having some fun digging into today's archives, just revisiting films that remind us of all things high school. It's been nearly 30 years since Clueless hit theaters, and everything from its star-studded cast, even to the fashions and, of course, memorable quotes, uh, are the reasons that Clueless is still a pop culture masterpiece. People still talk about it, love it. And Alicia Silverstone gave us the scoop on this film back in 1995. Let's take a look. Aw, oh, Nick, can't you come out and play? In Silverstone's latest role, she plays Cher, your typical Beverly Hills teenager who can do no wrong. So? The shopping with Dr. Seuss? Well, at least I wouldn't skin a collie to make my backpack. It's faux. Hello? That was a stop sign? I totally paused. <laughs> <laughs> and Alicia Silverstone <laughs> joins us this morning. Good morning. Hi. Nice to have you here. <laughs> what did you think when you just saw yourself there? Oh, it's, it's wild. It's such a funny movie. And every time I see it, it makes me just die. <laughs> <laughs> You're 18. You have three movies in addition to Clueless coming out. You've been keeping pretty busy, haven't you? Yes, nonstop. I have Le Nouveau Monde and um, The Babysitter and True Crime. Right now, Clueless opens Wednesday. I'm so excited. <laughs> I understand when you got the script for Clueless, you couldn't stop laughing. Was this a role you knew immediately you wanted to play? Oh, I was really nervous because I'd never done a comedy before, and I thought, I, I'm not funny. I can't do that. But, um, <laughs> but it, when I when I saw it, I, I when I finally got into it and realized that Cher was not just superficial and shallow. She's a really lovable, compassionate, happy girl. It made it all seem perfect. And now Cher is a high school student in yes. the Beverly Hills High School, where and she is just totally cool. Is that right? She's the most popular girl, the most beautiful girl, the most amazing creature that's ever existed. And she knows that, so she feels like the only thing she can do to help others is make them as perfect as she is. All right, we have a <laughs> clip of you where the phys ed teacher on campus is trying to convince Cher to play some tennis. Let's, let's take okay. a look. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right, Cher. Earth to Cher. Come in, Cher. <laughs> oh, my oh. God. Miss Stoger, I would just like to say the physical education in this school is a disgrace. I mean, standing in line for 40 minutes is hardly aerobically effective. I doubt I've worked off the calories in a stick of carefree gum. Well, you certainly exercise your mouth, Cher. Now hit the ball. 
Ms. Stoger, that machine is just a lawsuit waiting to happen. Thanks for the legal advice. <laughs> now, this was your first comedic role, as you said. How big yes. a challenge was that for you? It was just really... I mean, it was hard because there's a voice that comes with that that I didn't know I had to have. And, and I was always sort of quiet and soft-spoken. And this, she's sort of obnoxious and takes control. And But really just believing 100% in the silly things that Cher believes in. It's, it's just, it's very dramatic. It's fun making yeah. this picture, yeah. I bet. Now, in it, Amy, and uh, director and writer Amy Heckerling created a whole new language, a teen yeah. speak that uh, I understand you have pretty well down pat. <laughs> if you can, in your best share lingo, what is it to be clueless? Well, that, that, the title is the one thing that throws me off because I think Cher is a very intelligent character and the whole film is so intelligent that the, the title is, is sort of a joke that, it's, that they are clueless because the characters are so defined and so well-rounded that they really aren't clueless. But, but I guess that means without a brain, right? <laughs> so you say you're clueless. Yeah. <laughs> what, what is it uh, to be a Baldwin? What's a Baldwin? Baldwin is the hottest, the hottest guy there is. How just, would Cher say it? I don't know. <laughs> Baldwin. She just said the word, but it's just the meaning is that... that cool. Yeah. As opposed to being a Barney. Barney, and that's actually originally from the Flintstones. I don't know if anybody knows that. Very important piece of information. <laughs> that, um, that the Flintstones, the Betty part is because of Betty and the Barney is because of Barney. <laughs> what does it mean when Betty goes postal? She goes absolutely out of her mind. Crazy. Postal's a great word. <laughs> Going postal. See if it catches on. Now, Cher would consider herself a golden hottie. How about you? Um, Do you understand all the attention that you're getting? No, I, I don't feel that way at all. I, I, it's very lovely to be thought of that way. But it, Golden Hottie is a beautiful, as you said, you describe a beautiful, wonderful, really cool girl. You've been described by legions of young MTV fans as the same, but you're very shy about your new celebrity, your looks, your, your rising stardom. Why? Um, it just feels funny. You know, I'm 18, and, um, and I, I love acting. That's all I know is acting. But doing things like this and having to be who I am, is, that's hard, like in when people are watching. <laughs> I don't want anybody to watch. <laughs> Oh, we're going old school there. 1995, Clueless, 20th anniversary. Back in 2015, Alicia caught up with our own Savannah Guthrie and shared why she thinks the film still resonates. Of course, we remember you for Clueless, among other things, which, by the way, is 20 years old. I'm in complete <laughs> denial about that. Yeah. Can you believe it's been 20 years? Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't even... <laughs> Time makes no sense to me. You know, it's, I, I meet a lot of actors or actresses who've been in a movie that has become more than a movie, but like a cultural phenomenon as Clueless has, and they have kind of a love-hate relationship with the movie. How do you feel about it? Do you still love it? I love it. I mean, I think Amy Heckerling is so brilliant. I loved Fast Times at Ridgemont High, which I think did the same sort of thing for that generation. She just touches on a time and a period, and then the amazing thing about this movie is that it's still being discovered by new little people. Yeah. And Old, I love when older people tell, like, I mean, like, grandparents tell me that they love the movie. That's very odd and wonderful. And then little people who are just discovering it now, it's just being passed on and it's timeless. It seems, even though it captured that time so well, it seems that people really identify it with it. Before I let you go, what's the, what do you get quoted back at you more than anything else? I don't know. I probably as if. Yeah. I guess that would be the one. Or oops, my bad. Or I find myself <laughs> saying that sometimes. Oops, my bad. There were a lot of memorable lives. <laughs> Alicia Silverstone, it's great to have you here. Well, there you go, Alicia. As if. We'll be right back.
Well, folks, that's going to do it for today's show as a special treat. I don't know if this is a treat or not. It's not for me. We have a photo of myself from my freshman year uh, at Santa Monica High School. This is 1988, Blast from the Past. Thanks for hanging. Have a great one. We'll see you soon on our next edition of Popstar Plus. We are so excited to get started with cooking and today food. But before we do, before we do that, we're just going to take one second and shout out our new executive yes, producer. Talia. Talia is in the house. We just want to say, hey, welcome Happy to first today. first day. It's her first day of school. Hey. Go, Talia. We're so happy you're here. She's here. And you know who else we're so happy to have? Oh. If, well, she's not at the ranch hanging out yeah. with her family or filming <laughs> episodes of her hit Food Network show. Reed Drummond is busy coming up with easy and delicious meals for you and your family. Reed's the star of The Pioneer Woman and a best selling author of seven cookbooks. Her latest is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks Super Easy. It's 120 shortcut recipes for dinners, desserts, and more. We've missed yes, you. Hi, we're so missed happy you you're guys. here. It is so, I just feel like I'm seeing old friends and it's just so happy. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I love it. We, okay, first of all, we have to say congratulations. Yes. Your, your daughter got married. Oh my gosh, oh, thank sweet. you. How I was know. that? It was so much fun. I mean, oh. it, it was, we did it on the ranch, which was a crazy idea. We sort of <laughs> built this huge tent out there, but it was fun. And the, the great thing is it was a lot of work, but the day of, we were just able to let the process happen and enjoy it. It wasn't stressful. Did you and do any, did, you didn't do any cooking for it, did you? No. Good. You just no, relaxed. No, no, no. I know. Sure. I was going to say, who does sure. rehire as the no, That's why I was able to relax and have fun, yeah, right? And to so. watch your husband walk her down the aisle. Oh, we yes. know he's been recovering yeah. from an accident. It must yeah. have been special. It, it was wonderful. I mean, it was a blessing. We, it, that's my favorite picture of the two oh, of them. Um, he was a little stiff then. He's, he's doing much better. He's on his horse today, so everything's okay, great. Back We're on the horse. Very, very lucky. All right. What are we going to cook? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so now that Hoda has eaten a whole chocolate I know, cake you know today, um, it's really good. Why was everybody making fun of you? I don't, I don't appreciate that. I don't, thank you, Jen. If I think I you would have supported would have me. It was really quiet, and then all of a sudden, the cake was gone. And <laughs> But you I, should see what she does to chips. Oh, I, well, you know, <laughs> you it's morning. It's happening again. You have the rest of the day to work it off, right? Exactly. So you will. after the cake, I thought it would be great to make some vegetables. So I'm going to do a sheet pan gnocchi Yummy. dinner. And okay. what I love about it, my cookbook, really, I'm not afraid to use shortcut ingredients. So my favorite ingredient is this is store-bought gnocchi. Oh. So and is this frozen or you just no, get it? No, it's actually shelf stable, believe oh. it or not. So you can uh, you just buy wait, it. Throw it in there. Wait, yeah. are you, is this a joke? <laughs> what you just did? Out. You just dumped everything on the sheet everything pan? Everything on the sheet I pan. I thought you had to boil oh, it. Oh, no, 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 because we're going to roast it. Oh. So then What's I've that, got. Pesto? Yes, pesto. <gasps> I'm going to mix it with olive oil. Oh. Did I'm trying not to get pesto, pesto on me, so I That's moved okay. it away from your beautiful. Marie, can you buy the pesto or did you make that? No, bought the pesto. See, I like everything so far. She's speaking our language. Yeah, I mean, during the pandemic, you know, I, I mm -hmm. kind of burned out on cooking a little bit because there were Didn't so we many all? kids around. Is that it? Yeah, so they, that's it. Because pesto is so flavorful, it has garlic and, and you know, And do you need to oil the, the pan? Did you already oil it? You don't it? have to because there's oh. plenty of olive oil in the pesto mixture. So you basically, just mix it all around mix like it that. All around, and then look how Wait. beautiful it looks. Oh, my gosh, Jenna. we have to pull taste. it out of the oven. So I like to do a little balsamic. Do you want us to help oh, you? Yes, yes, glaze. help me and there grab some go. Parmesan shavings. So do you just, that? I love balsamic yes. I do everything I do. on anything. And you know what? I used to make my own by just reducing balsamic mm, for yeah. hours and the house would smell like vinegar and my kids would be like, what is what that doing? smell? This so is kind of crispy. It's delicious, isn't it? And see how all the oh veggies got beautiful color. Mm. Mm. But it's such We're, an easy meal and I would totally just eat this, but. Wait. We could do this too, which is huge. Look at what we just in did. In one second. Put it in the oven. Is dress this basil? It. What did you what is that? Tor basil. Oh, just, tor basil. Yep. And I, I'm so lazy, I don't even want to chop basil anymore. Just chop it. By the way, I like that. Oh, should we dish. go around the back? Yeah, more? we have another recipe. Okay, okay great. Right. Honestly, so mm -hmm. sheet pans are kind of my thing. I okay. love them. They're, they're just, I, I get nervous if I don't have 20 ready to go at mm -hmm. all times. So this is a sheet pan salad, and I love this concept because you basically roast. Any veggie you want, it's it's the squash time of year. Oh, so yes. this is a mixture of cubed butternut squash Yum. and delicata squash. I love delicata squash. What is that? I'm I know. obsessed what is with it. Me too. Do you ever so put it on it? toast? Oh, Wait. yeah. Mash, mash yes. it. Yes. What are you talking it's about? It's just so a squash. At, this is what it looks like. And oh, it's basically store? kind oh. of an heirloom type okay. of squash. But the great thing is you can eat the skin. It gets really tender. So ah. butternut, it can be a little bit tough, Should not I do, very tasty. Yes. 
drizzle and then we're going to do pepper. another roasted vegetable situation salt and pepper italian seasoning this is so brilliant this and then just so toss. brilliant but here's what's fun about what? it so roast it and it's like 4 50 25 30 minutes okay. and look how gorgeous so that's delicious on its own but i build a salad oh, out of this thank you so basically, you make your own dressing too don't you well sometimes sometimes, sometimes i doctor up bottle dressing so but I'm using the roasted vegetables as a base for mm, a salad. Yes, it's delicious. Mm. Isn't it good? Yes. Oh, and the dressing mm. is tahini, mm. mustard, lemon juice, olive oil, honey. Okay. And isn't then, it, isn't it pretty? 10 okay. plus. 10 plus plus. Pomegranate seeds. seeds. Yep. Mm. yep. Pistachios. Pistachios, pomegranate seeds. Mm. So I love pomegranates. It's pretty at Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then goat cheese, which Hoda Great. doesn't love. We, thank you. Well, Hoda well, likes it. It, it just doesn't love her. Yeah. Okay. There's a thank lot of TMI so in much. this segment. <laughs> There's a lot about Hoda. <laughs> anyway. Bree, thank you so much for these recipes. Head today.com slash food. And for Bree's new book, it has recipes just like this one. Head today.com slash shop. I predict a bestseller. Me too. Okay. <laughs>back with today's food thrilled to say good morning to our next guest finally after all of those teases the pioneer <laughs> woman herself reed drummond has made it all the way from her ranch in oklahoma are you near blake's ranch in oklahoma not so much, not so much but you know we're in the sta same state yeah. so, you know, we, we know each other when i was there marrying him and gwen i would have stopped by your ranch seriously and said a little yeah. next time or yes, your 25th wedding true. anniversary i could have you, you, renewed your vows <laughs> oh, well we're also out with a brand new cookbook it's called super easy it features more than 100 mm. shortcut recipes which we like the sound of that actually lots been going on in the ranch in oklahoma you look absolutely stunning you've got oh, a daughter who just got married right yes Hard to believe. Yeah, and you're about to celebrate your 25th anniversary, and Carson's going to do your renew your vows for you. <laughs> that's that's hard to believe too. I know I'm only 29. I don't know how I can oh, wow. get married. You for look 29. Years. What happened you to you? during COVID? All I did was eat and drink and not work out. And well, listen, same. I I was wearing pandemic pants this time last year. I don't know if you remember, but. But, uh, yeah, I just, you know, the wedding was a great inspiration and motivation. But then once I started kind of uh, exercising more and getting healthier, it felt so good yeah. that I just kept going. So I'm, I'm kind of glad I'm over that hump. And now it's about just maintaining and, and yeah. enjoying. Well, I don't so. know if these delicious recipes are going to be uh, on any maintenance, but they are really <laughs> smell good. Uh, speaking of my wellness journey, yes. let's eat some tots yes. Yes. Uh, with cheese let's. all over them. So, yeah. It starts with chicken. Yep. Yes. So, I'm going to make tachos. Now, do you know what tachos are, Carson? No. No idea. You need to know. So, <laughs> tachos are just like nachos, but they're made with tots. Oh, Yum. So, oh. I, baked, I baked some tots with a little we cumin and We have the gang eating powder, already. Oh, cook right. some chicken, add some celery. So, these are buffalo chicken tachos. Yum. Celery, garlic, and green onions. Did you make up tachos or is that a thing? I never it's heard of tachos. It's kind of a thing, but it hasn't okay. swept the nation yet. Yeah, it's going now to. Will. I'm no. kind of hoping. Uh, It'll but be trending by the end of the segment. You can put on nachos, you can put on tots okay. and call them tachos. So Love it. Then, of course, buffalo sauce, and then you just let oh. this simmer. Mm, I started delicious. with raw no. chicken, but you can do rotisserie chicken to okay. make it easier. Yeah. Mm. So simmer that until it's luscious Have you and changed saucy. what you cook now because of your sort of wellness journey? Is it? Is it Put no. you on a different path? You <laughs> <laughs> no, and you know the thing is, is I have, I have teenage boys, college students, uh, 
lad. Right. A, mm -hmm. Ranchers. You know, yeah, cowboy. And so I have to make food that everybody loves. Right. And yeah. I don't, I'm not good when I deny myself, yeah. you know, whole Butter categories of food. And, so mm -hmm. I'm just kind of learning to eat. I like to say I eat a Rhode Island-sized piece of cake instead of a Texas-sized piece <laughs> right. of cake. That's the best way you get the flavors and the taste. It's, it's that just taste. It's delicious. Really good. Gosh, so everything's good. good. So, yeah. good. so yeah. You, you pull the tots out of the oven. Mm -hmm. They're seasoned, so they're a little bit elevated. Mm -hmm. I kind of push them into a pile. Yeah. Pepper jack cheese yeah. all over. I okay. mean, this this is what life's all spice. about right oh, here. Oh, right here, yeah. And then you spoon the saucy chicken all oh, over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you can do ground beef that. and got some hit, you know right? black beans and do sort of. Is a the chicken mix. gonna because it's hot melt that cheese? Or are you putting this back in the no, oven? No, it's going back in the oven. Okay, yeah. I thought so because so. okay. you want to melt the cheese like uh, nachos. So mm. all the cheese you want melts. Mine. Oh, here we go. That's oh, okay. all yeah. the cheese. Actually, Pepper jack cheese, the buffalo yep. sauce. Mm. It's hearty. It's, it's got a kick, huh. but oh jeez! Did you know redheads can tolerate uh, spicy food more than anybody really? else? Really? Is that true? Yeah. So yeah. this is good. Is that true? You that love good? it? That's we'll delve good. into the genealogy Chicken. of that some other time. But, wow. but basically, you garnish with. Uh, Blue cheese, mm -hmm. and to make blue cheese dressing, I just take ranch dressing and mm -hmm. add blue cheese to it. Oh, oh and clever. It's Another very shortcut. easy. Well, you can do knew? bottled ranch or you can make your own, but Brilliant. nice little shortcut. Mm -hmm. So this is what, uh, this is why my teenage boys love me. Oh, I can see why. That is delicious. Hey, Carson. Really, yeah. really good. Hey, this is gone. I mean, just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wham. What happened? Oda. Oda's eating a whole bunt cake already. Oda, we have wow. not started the cake at, segment yet. Hey, take a breath. No one's missed these eating segments more than hosts. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Remember, Rhode Island, not Texas. <laughs> She's going state by state. <laughs> All right, well, that does bring us to our chocolate cake. Now, this is your secret recipe, right? Okay, yes. Yeah. So, confession, my, my top secret ingredient in my top secret cake is dark chocolate cake mix. Oh, okay. And what? listen, I had my house full of humans during the pandemic yeah. and large six, you know, six foot five humans yeah. and football players. And I had... I was making so much food that I was about to lose my religion. I mean, <laughs> every day I was just like, I can't do it anymore. So I'm not afraid to whip out the chocolate cake. I doctored it with, uh, you know, bittersweet chocolate chips just to make it a little bit more uh, rich. Wow. But the thing is, this is the secret. It's a box cake. Well, it's what, oh, yeah. Okay. But the thing is, I'm topping it with ganache, oh, which is Ooh. heavy cream wow. and good oh, well, quality go. chips. Yeah. That's okay. all two ingredients. Yes. And then it turns into this Here. luscious. Ooh. And are these oh, inside the food, or is this just like a topping this thing becomes, situation? So, well, you can just eat one if you like. So you just made, okay, yeah. So you made the, the we cake. We gotta go. Oh, we're out of time. Okay, yeah. I really want to understand this. And then drizzle. Drizzle. Uh, I do sprinkles on top, <laughs> but after Halloween, you can take Beautiful leftover cake. candy, chop it, it up, it and top. put it on top. So oh, yeah. Hold oh, my God. Happy plate. plate. Wait a minute. The plate. Oh, yeah. Show it. Show it. Clean Literally. plate club. Clean plate club. Clean plate Done. club. There's, you left a oh. And she's going to eat out. And also, she's going to move in with you. <laughs> and she's she's giggling. She's giggling a lot over there. Congratulations <laughs> on everything. Love your show. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right, of course, you can find all these recipes at today.com slash food and pick up a copy of Super Easy at today.com slash shop. This morning on Today Food, lasagna two ways with layers of pasta, meat sauce, and creamy cheese. Lasagna is one of the ultimate comfort foods. But get ready for something a little new this morning. Reed Drummond, a.k.a. the Pioneer Woman, has created two recipes. They're going to become your favorites. Her latest book is called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier. Reed, good morning. Hi, Savannah. It's good to see you. Now, I, I can't, you're doing something really different with lasagna, which is risky. Well, it's a little risky, but when you see these recipes, you will totally understand. I like to mash things up, and yep. you know, you don't want to make lasagna over and over and over. So we are going to make shrimp scampi lasagna roll-ups. I like it. Which mm -hmm. are as good as they sound. So okay. I cooked some shrimp in butter, onion, garlic, a little thyme, and... Um, Chopped it up. Okay. So I'm going to make a sort of a shrimpy, cheesy filling, and this is cream cheese, ricotta, egg, and parmesan. I mean, what could you, what could possibly go wrong? I know. It so I mean, good. it's all right. Sign me up. Yes. So I'll let you stir this together, okay. and I'm going to start on the white sauce. Um, my new cookbook has. Lots of fun recipes like this. Yeah, where, I like that it's different. Yeah, and buffalo chicken quesadillas, for instance. I have two teenage boys at home. Yeah. Um, my girls grew up and left me. So, <laughs> so, so mean. Now you've got those brutes at home. So feed. rude of them. You still got Charlie the dog? Well, Charlie's not with us anymore, oh, but I have I have Walter. Okay. Oh, Walter. And I have a couple of other little bassets running around. Look so. at the whole crew over there. It's like, so oh how could you ask that? But, oh, no, it's okay. Charlie lives on in his books. Yes, and, he does. We read his books. 
cookbook all the time. Oh, I love hearing that. Okay, so I, I stirred it. So that's all stirred together, and I am making just a beautiful white sauce, and okay. it's, I started with the roux, and it has cream and milk, mm -hmm. and so you cook and cook and cook until and you're this trying is to thick. thicken it up, right? Thicken it up. Is Add that thick enough or not really? This looks great. Okay. This isn't quite there, but right. I have I have Magic some of already television. finished. Yes. So I'm going to have you help me build a oh, roll up. Okay. So this is the filling you just stirred together. Mm -hmm. Take about a generous third a cup. Okay. And put it on the end of the... Oh, this has the... Okay, the whole thing is in here. Our yeah. shrimp, our everything. And these are cooked lasagna noodles. Mm -hmm. I cooked them about half the time mm -hmm. that the package says. Okay. And then just roll it up. Yep. That's the name, lasagna oh roll-ups. They're so cute and pretty. What they do you think? They are so cute. Amazing. Amazing. Are you dying? Yes. Oh, my goodness. It's between bisque and a lasagna. Oh. Good oh. point. That's exactly what it is. Oh. And then I always put the... Seam side down. Yeah, of course, to make it look pretty. I poured the white sauce in the bottom of the dish. Oh. And then I'll let you pour and the then rest gonna, of it. Am I pouring over. or am I drizzling? No, pour. Okay, pour, pour that get in there. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Look at that creamy yummy. It is Isn't that so gorgeous. Good. Yes. And then top it with mozzarella. Mm -hmm. And you can see the finished dish right here with parsley on top. That doesn't look crazy difficult either. No, it's not. And my daughter, who lives in Dallas now, uh, saw my new cookbook and she said, when I come home, will you make me the shrimp oh. scampi lasagna roll-up? So I mean, why not look at it? It's okay. gorgeous. I want to taste that. So that's lasagna one way, and now the this second shocked way, me. Lasagna soup. I mean, it's it's really earth-shattering. Okay, it's, tell me, tell me. I'm it's have a bite beautiful. Here. So started with ground beef, mm -hmm. sausage, uh, onion, oh. garlic, yeah. thyme, oregano, and I just cooked it, and then added. Mm. Oh my God! Let's try that. Take your time. Delayed reaction. So good. Okay. And just turned it into a really delicious uh, whole tomatoes, tomato paste, mm -hmm. uh, parsley, and you can see the whole tomatoes. I actually like to let them cook down a little bit. Yeah. And then break them up because oh. they're a little softer. Mm -hmm. Anytime I try to squeeze them with my hand, it winds up in my eye. Yeah. Or, <laughs> that's not fun. Or on my shirt, which is even worse. Even worse, exactly. <laughs> so you just kind of, you browned up the the uh, beef and then oh. yes, then you put in the drain the, the excess fat and then turn it into a beautiful soup. Mm -hmm. And then I cooked some broken up lasagna noodles. Oh. So this is that there. down at the bottom. Lasagna it's like a hug. It is. Oh, <laughs> so really wait, what about point. the cheese? Where's the cheese? Okay, so okay. once you simmer away the soup yes. and the noodles are perfect, I make this little ricotta dumpling mixture. Oh, wow. And all it is is ricotta, Parmesan, salt, pepper, basil, and oh parsley. Mm -hmm. Stir it together. Mm -hmm. And then when you serve up the soup, you just put little dollops right in the middle, oh and it's just, mm -hmm. if the soup is really piping hot, the yep. ricotta dumpling just kind of melts Can I come it. over to your house, mm -hmm. Reed? Yes, Is this yes. what we make there? Because it <laughs> sounds fab. Bring your kids and uh, Lad will put them to work on the ranch. Yeah, I would love <laughs> it. I love it. Thank you so much. We, how do you like Fantastic. the soup? It's amazing. 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 Which one do you like I better? Love I love the oh. soup. Yeah. It's crazy. We, we're torn, can you yeah. tell? I got I like, one vote for soup and... Uh -huh. Well, you know what, though? And then you get a piece of shrimp on here. this yeah. one. That's the thing. Oh. And all that shrimp scampi oh. flavor is in there. You really redesigned healthy. lasagna. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's next level. Yeah. My wife I, loves your shrimp. I get bored really easily. <laughs> so I, I have to have some fun in the kitchen. Thank, Thank you so great. much, Rhea. I know you're coming back for the fourth yes. hour. More food. You can find all of these recipes at today.com slash food. And for more on Rhea's book, go to today.com slash shop. You can buy it there. Thank you, honey.
Bree Drummond is busier than ever. Not only is she a mom of four, she's a New York Times bestselling author. She has three million Instagram followers, and she's a star of the hugely popular Food Network show. It's called The Pioneer Woman. And somehow she's also managed to find time to put together a new cookbook called The Pioneer Woman Cooks the New Frontier, which features a couple of recipes that we're going to be making today. And she took all the photos for the book. Of course, she you does did everything. That too? She did that too. My camera's a mess. My camera's sticky. <laughs> Food all over it. So she's got roast chicken for us. Look at this. Yes, I I'm so happy to cook we're, with you both. So I'm a big happy. fan of both of you. We so love thank you, you for having me. So wait, I can't cook. Yeah, me either. But wait, you're based in Oklahoma, and you just do your sh everything from your home. Is that pretty much? We we film the show at our guest lodge, so yeah. at least they don't have to trip over my teenager's laundry, <laughs> yeah. you know, dirty socks at our real I house. I was telling but. her that my daughter Christina is like. She is the most incredible woman. I her oh, voice puts me to sleep. I watch her. Her life is oh, idyllic. Yeah. My voice puts my husband to sleep too. <laughs> All right, so we're making chicken today. Yes, I just want to show you my favorite way to roast chicken. Okay. I, I'm wearing gloves just for the spatchcocking. Yeah. So do you know what spatchcocking no, a chicken is? No, no, so no. Spatchcocking. It's super no. easy. Basically, okay. you have to put on gloves, cut okay. the backbone out, which is just snip on either side. Okay. That's the unpleasant part. And splay it out. But then you splay it out, and the whole point is to kind of... <laughs> Oh. The whole point is right. to get it as flat as possible. You can use your palm and uh -huh. kind of push, mm -hmm. but that way a chicken that would normally take um, a lot longer to roast yes. just takes uh, really a fraction of the time. So then you wind up with uh, a beautiful roasted chicken. So what I like to do is make sort of an herb dressing, Ooh, and it's just uh, simple olive oil, mm -hmm. herbs, cut some baby gold potatoes in half and just toss them in the herb mixture. How long does this take you to make? You want to help me oh, and just sure, kind of sure. scatter them around and then you would brush the same mixture on the chicken. Now is this Good a job. greased pan or is this not? It doesn't have it doesn't to be have because to be. the chicken has so much so uh, beautiful grease as it cooks. Okay. So just really about 30 minutes total. You start with a high heat and then lower it and then look what you wind up with. <laughs> wow. Halfway through I add cherry tomatoes mm. and zucchini and then put it back in and finish it up. And you have this beautiful roasted chicken, which I like to serve as roasted chicken, mm -hmm. but I also like leftover roasted Can chicken. Can we try this? Yes, of Maria, course. This is like your perfect meal, by the way. That's right, that have is. Have yeah. chicken. I mean, oh. I like French fries, but yes. that, we're not having that. But <laughs> I'm sorry, Maria. No. <laughs> I should have made no, we're fries. Not, we're not allowed to eat that. I either. think roasted chicken is the perfect mm. food. And that is yummy. It's good for weeknight family mm -hmm. meals. But Are you surprised at how your cooking, your passion, has turned into this incredible success? Well, you know, I think you nailed it. Just passion. If you if you are passionate about what you do, mm -hmm. it can you take you in directions you never thought you you'd go in. And that's um, I've had so much fun with Pioneer Woman because it started as mm -hmm. blogging. Mm -hmm. So come around. Oh, yeah. um, and I want to show you what you can do with the chicken okay. if you don't want to slice it up and right. serve it as roast chicken. So you can shred it, mm -hmm. which is my favorite thing in the world. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make a beautiful chicken and wild rice soup. Soup? Oh, Onion, yum. celery, and carrots. Okay. And then I'm going to deglaze with some white wine, okay. which I love in any soup. It just adds mm. beautiful flavor. And it's okay. getting to be soup weather out there. It's, yeah, it's getting to be. Finally, did you have a hot summer here oh. like we did? We had, we had a scorcher. <laughs> it seemed to go on forever. And then add some flour just to thicken it okay. up. And then you'll cook this for a bit. Do all and your then kids cook? No. Oh, <laughs> Sadly, no. My daughter Paige loves to cook and she's a great cook. The rest mm. of my kids love to eat. So, uh, welcome to my plight. But I love to cook and so it's, it's, uh, What's it's that? chicken stock? Chicken stock okay. and then water mm -hmm. and this is so easy, is wild rice. It's, oh, I didn't know it was that color. Yeah, it's not the mix that you buy in a box, oh. it's real wild rice. Um, Minnesota has, has wild rice, okay. that kind of comes from Minnesota. And then you basically cook it until the rice is done and mm -hmm. look how beautiful it That's looks. gorgeous. Oh. And then you add the chicken in, obviously. Um, and I like to kind of cream a it up a little cream. bit. Yeah, you got I to. Mean, I mean, I can't think of many dishes that I make that aren't made better with a little cream. <laughs> exactly. So you can add a little or a lot and then let it simmer some more mm -hmm. with some aromatics, sage, and rosemary and thyme. Yes. 
And then I love to add Ooh. kale also. To at the, the soup? To the soup, oh, yeah. At the end, is that kind of the Kind last of at touch? the end, you yeah. just let it uh, simmer in the last few minutes. Tell us what this pasta situation yeah. is. Okay, so again, what you can do with the leftover chicken yeah. is make a chicken spaghetti casserole. And it's, I think, Casseroles are just the ultimate comfort food, and mm. this has mushrooms and mm. a little bit of wine, mm. of course. So, mm. if you can spatchcock a chicken, you can <laughs> do anything in life. <laughs> you can spatchcock a chicken. We need a t shirt that says that. <laughs> yeah. But really, you can make soup and casseroles, enchiladas. Reed, so. this was, these were all delicious, awesome meals. I mean, they seem easy enough, too. Very easy. Thank if you. it's not easy, I won't do it. Awesome. Oh, that's good. For these recipes, head to today.com slash food. And for more about Reese Cookbook, Go to today.com slash shop. And welcome back. We're back with Today Food. This morning's guest, you know her, you love her, Reed Drummond. She is known as the pioneer woman, and today she's showing us two easy recipes for a family feast. You've got a, a simple, easy pasta recipe. What are we cooking? Yes, so I am so into shortcut homemade ravioli. And what makes it shortcut is that I use wonton wrappers. So these are just in the store. And I made a little mixture of ricotta, parmesan, salt, pepper, lemon zest. Wow. And I just put a little, I mm. can't get too close to you guys, but put a little dollop in the middle of the wonton wrapper. And then I just take my clean finger mm -hmm. <laughs> and rub a little egg wash around the edge. Mm. And then take a second wonton wrapper and put it on top, line up the edges. And then you just want to press it together. Oops, I grabbed three. That's okay. It's, I'm doing this on the fly. And then just force all the air out. And honestly, if you can't make, make homemade pasta dough or you don't have time, this is such a great shortcut. I like that. And then you just can get an assembly line with your kids, make as many of these as you want, and then just drop them into salted water one by one. And look. All right, I love those. Little pieces of ravioli. Just Delicious. Fresh hey, and ready to go. Hey, Reed, can we, we only have a minute, but we want to get to that dessert that, what is it? Ice it's box, ice box yeah. cake. Oh yeah. Blackberry ice box cake. So the frozen pound cakes that we all know and love, I shave the top off, crumble it into crumbs, pour in butter. Very easy. And then just put this on the stove top, toast the crumbs. Mm. And then the cake that's left, you slice the cake into three slices lengthwise. I already started a layer and it's cake, a mixture of jam, blackberries, and lemon juice, Yum. and lemon zest. Yum. Huh. It's so fun to use a frozen pound cake because then you cut that whole well, step. Oh my gosh, uh, you know, don't even to make look hard to Re, it looks delicious. Something Savannah so, and I could make. We're happy. Yeah. All right. We you just layer it kind of like lasagna. All right. Cake, jam, cream. Re, and then you wind we up. love you. We love you. We can't wait for your book to come out. Thank you for cooking for us. Uh, you can check out Thank her you, recipes girl. at today.com slash food.
Good Friday morning. We are tracking extreme weather across the country. Including the 